45-minute drive from Sin City, Las Vegas. It is hot as hot can be. And the question is, who's going to roll the dice and hit the jackpot here in Prim? It is round number six of the AMA National Grand Prix Championship Series. Jack Corpella pleased to be joined with Dirt Bikes Magazine's resident superstar, Mark Tilly. Mark, so glad that you stopped back once again. Boy, this is going to be a lot different from what we saw in 29 Palms. We're talking about a very technical, tight, hot course. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a lot different than 29 Palms. This is uh, a lot a lot more sand, um, not as big as embedded rocks as what 29 Palms was, but it's like, going to be a lot hotter. I mean, it's definitely different than the last time we, we got together at the, the two-stroke uh, race. But, yeah, this is, this is a demanding track on both rider and on the bike. It's, it's going to be... A pretty eventful main event, that's for sure. I just caught a look at myself in the monitor. I'm sorry, guys. I'm already glowing. <laughs> I'm way overdressed. Last time I came to Vegas, it was snowing, but now much more Vegas-like, and that's going to mean hydration, hydration, hydration for these riders. I talked to Ryan Surratt moments ago. He's not feeling good. He's pounding the Gatorade, making sure that he has enough fluids in him. Yeah, no, we, we've actually been out here since Friday evening, and it's been hot like this. I mean, even when we got here, it was hot. Kids were racing. It's, I, I've been racing. I just got off the track not too long ago, and it is. It's all about staying hydrated. And more, the more hydrated you are, the better your body feels. The the less hydrated you are, the it's a really slippery slope. And you got to stay hydrated. You got to keep food in you. It's hard to keep food in you when you're hot, but it's it's definitely something that has to be done. All right, well, we've got a lot to talk about. We're going to get you set for today's race. So many storylines heading into this one, so many new faces, and that includes the Sherco team who is entering their first NGPC of the year. We caught up with Team Sherco earlier on. We're here with familiar faces in the DC Racing Sherco team with Dallas Chedesser and lead rider Mason Ottersberg. Dallas, it's good to have you back here at the NGPC series. Yeah, it's, it's awesome to be back here and... Uh... It's been a while. It's been since last year, and so we're excited to come back here and see where we stack up and go from there. And you know, we're only doing a limited schedule to this uh, series, so we're uh, we're going to do some testing and figure out where we need to go to to get better. Tell us a little bit about the Sherco and the new bike, and kind of how this whole thing came together. You don't really see Sherco, uh, I would say, in the West Coast on the off-road uh, off-road side. Well, it came about back in November. Um, I made a phone call to them to see if we can get some OEM support, and they were very receptive to the idea. Um, I basically built them a plan as to what we wanted to do to come out here and race these bikes and test them to further expand their brand for more of a European-style type bike that is, you know, their bread and butter is Enduro. So we're having to use that Enduro pro, uh, platform to, you know, do more of this fast, go fast, uh, racing type um, bikes where we're competing against the other OEMs that have MX bikes. Yeah, uh, awesome. And uh, speaking over uh, the Western Hair Scrambles, we got Mason Ottersberg. Mason, you're defending your championship uh, over at the Western Hair Scrambles, but you're back here at a GP. You have a lot of experience. What's it? Uh, tell us a little bit about being back here at the GP series on a Sherco. Honestly, it's, uh, it's kind of nice to be here with a low pressure situation and just come out here knowing that we're testing and trying to develop this bike and, uh, you know, bring a a full season for 2024 and uh you know the the biggest goal is just to see where we stack up against competition you know i've been on the yamaha brand for quite a few years now and found some success with it uh came close to a championship here at one point and then crashed out so uh you know to be back here is it's good and i think we're close with what we got and i think if we can continue to develop the bike and uh, just tweak on the things that we need to to make it work for GP will be pretty close. Uh, all right, awesome. Well, comfortability is not a problem here at the Sherco uh, Racing. Chedessa Racing, uh, looking for high things here tomorrow in the pro race. 
Well, big thanks to the third member of our broadcast team, Nick Garvin. And Mark, it's clear that Team Sherco could be a huge factor here today. Yeah, and it's it's definitely there. It's a brand new effort for Sherco and, and Factory Sherco, the Factory One team um, on the East Coast who predominantly does a lot of hard enduro stuff. But it's nice to see Sherco branching out and coming to the West Coast because it's they're, that team is basically developing a brand new motorcycle for this type of racing. It's something that that bike hasn't ever done. You're getting a good look at the fans staying cool. Some of the smart fans brought umbrellas easy up. Good call, guys. And hey, if you're watching from the comfort of your living room, share with a friend. Again, we are live on the Dirt Bike Magazine YouTube channel, and we'll be live for this entire race. Now, one of the keys to victory, just like all of our stops, but especially here where we're here in this place will get so rough and brutal, is a proper suspension setup. And guys, we have a suspension guru, a real legend in the house. He's worked with Ricky Carmichael. Bubba Stewart. He's out of pro circuit suspension. Earlier, we caught up with the one and only Bones Bacon. What's going on, you guys? We're out here at round number six of the NGPC series, getting ready to go for the pro race, walking around the pro pits, and we walk into the legend, Jim Bones. Bones, welcome to uh, NGPC. How you doing? Thanks. I'm doing awesome. Uh, came up here to beautiful Prim, Nevada to uh, hang out for the weekend, helping the JCR team with their bike setup a little bit. But uh, I think for the most part, they're ready to go. But uh, at Pro Circuit, we do we do help JCR. So I like uh, following them around a little bit and just keeping an eye on them. <laughs> right on. What well, you guys, you got to remember, this guy not only has Supercross champions, the guy is an off-road legend. He worked with guys like Danny Hamill, Kendall Norman and multiple, multiple off-road legends. Jim, what's the difference between Supercross and uh, per se a GP race suspension wise? Well, very good question. Um, it, the off, this off-road stuff is the hardest I've ever encountered to set a bike up for. The speeds these guys hit out here are, are pretty high and they drop into big G outs, which at times you need the suspension stiffer than normal Supercross, but then they get in the tight stuff or the rollers or places where there's rocks and it needs to be real supple and, and pick that stuff up. So it's extremely challenging to set a bike up for these conditions and, and it's one of the hardest things I've ever done in the almost 35 years I worked at Pro Circuit. Yeah, absolutely. You guys, Ryan Surratt, he's been on the top of the podium a few times this year. He's on the Pro Circuit suspension and he's got this guy hooking him up. Look for Ryan Surratt and the JCR team up the top of the front tomorrow in the pro race. Well, clearly not only do we have a lot of talent out there in the rider's position, we got a lot of talent in the pits with the tuners, the suspension tuners. And Mark, I know you're over here telling me this guy is an absolute legend. And did you hear what Bone said? He said this is the most difficult form of motorsport to set up the suspension for the NGPC series. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things to where you can't really replicate a race situation when you when you're trying to replicate something like that i've been with bones at four o'clock in the afternoon on a thursday afternoon at, at glen helen and just going all i want to do is go home like this is the guy is the reason why that team with him and mitch the reason why that team actually did so well and got all those championships is because of their desire to make it the best that it could actually be I mean, the guy, he's absolutely amazing. And then, he, like he said, he, he ran the suspension department at Pro Circuit for years and years and years, and then just barely handed it off in the last couple of years. And it's one of those things to where when you get to work with professionals like that, it makes your job as a rider that much easier on race day because they hammer you on practice days. And the guy, and, and he's a nice guy. He's a great guy to hang out with. There's a lot going on, a lot of experts back there in the pits. I'll tell you what else is back there in the pits, and that is the brand new 2023 Yamaha YZF450. We're hearing major, major changes. I got a side-by-side -side comparison from the 22 to the 23. Much slimmer, as Jack Simpson says, a little more racier. But why don't we hear from the experts themselves as we caught up with Team Trevor Stewart to get a good look at their 2023 Yamaha. Today we have these new Yamahas that belong to the Purvines Racing Team. These are Trevor Stewart's YZ450S, one's a 2023 and one's a 2022. And today we're going to kind of compare how the older generation now Yamaha works compared to this newer generation Yamaha and kind of what makes these bikes so good for the NGPC series.
All right, so we just wrapped up riding Trevor Stewart's bikes here at Glen Helen Raceway. We had the 2022 Yamaha on hand, as well as the 2023, and we did a lot of back-to-back -back comparison. And quite frankly, it's amazing how different these bikes feel. Um, I know if you're going to an NGPC, you know, it's definitely off more off-road, um, some higher speeds, really rough terrain, but and the new Yamaha is definitely more of a, I think they put more of a motocross emphasis on it than maybe the old bike did, but I think this new Yamaha will be just fine racing the NGPC series. Kind of starting off the motor between the two. Uh, the old motor is definitely very fast, but it can be a little tough to manage and just a little, maybe a little tougher to ride than the new motor. The new motor is so unbelievably fast, but so easy to ride at the same time. It's kind of, doesn't really make sense how they did that, but it is. Uh, the twisted development mapping they're running in it right now is really good. Starts off with a fairly smooth kind of bottom end. You know, it doesn't have a super gnarly hit where you're ripping your arms off or you're gonna loop out the bike. Like it just smooths it out just a little bit, but still the pulling power from bottom to mid to top is really strong and aggressive and it pulls really good. And it revs seemingly to the moon. We could do almost an entire lap in second gear here today, no problem. And uh, yeah, like I said, we, we shift up to third gear and some of the faster straightaways and maybe up the hill if we've got a good run at it, but you could certainly leave the bike in second and it'd pull the, the that motor would pull second gear all day long. So it's just crazy how fast, but controllable and usable the power is on this new Yamaha. And moving on to suspension, Enzo killed the suspension on both bikes, but especially the new bike. Kind of the biggest thing I always liked about Enzo's suspension and Trevor's bikes in general is the kind of that initial bump compliance and the initial ground feel is so good. It's like you can feel the ground, but you're not necessarily feeling the bumps. Then the hold up as well, kind of very progressive linear feel through the stroke. We never felt ourselves bottoming out or anything. Obviously Trevor's a lot faster and taller than me, so he has a lot more leverage on the bike and he's charging through the bumps harder. So kind of bottoming wasn't really expected, but we never really felt any of that. Just that initial bump compliance and that feel uh, really stood out to me on the on both bikes. Move on to the handling. This new Yamaha feels 10, 15, even 20 pounds lighter than the old bike. Um, it's crazy that five or six pounds on paper translated so much to how much lighter it felt on the track. Uh, I think coming to an NGPC, you go to a place like Taft or even Blythe or Prim, um, really just about all the tracks having that lighter more nimble chassis that still seems to be very stable with that precision stabilizer. I think that new chassis feels will be a huge benefit to a lot of the NGPC racing. Say if you're going to like 29 Palms where it's really fast, high speed and choppy, and then you have the older chassis and the older, older bike that's more stable might be a little better. But I think for a majority of the races and the more majority of the riders, that new Yamaha at 2023 will be really, really good. Like I said, very easy to ride, very comforting, and very confidence inspiring, which is uh, really key, especially riding a 450 out and off-road. Yeah, so thanks to Pervine's Yamaha and Trevor and Brad Stewart for having us out today. It was really cool riding both bikes, kind of the older platform that has been developed and then the new platform that's being developed as we speak. Uh, Oyster Trevor's having a lot of success already on the new bike, and uh, I think there's gonna be plenty more success to come as he develops this bike more. Um, and the rest of the team get on it. So yeah, the Pervine Skyama team and Trevor, they did a great job getting this bike to where it's at. And it'll be cool to see where it gets to with more development time down the road. All right, thanks for tuning in and we hope to see you at an NGPC near you. From one Trevor to another, that's our resident pro, <laughs> Trevor Hunter. Thanks so much. And he did a great side-by-side -side comparison. It just amazes me how these manufacturers continue to push the envelope, continue to innovate, continue to advance. He's saying 15 pounds lighter for the 2023. That's amazing. Yeah, no, it's actually, we got to go to the, we got to go to Carmichael's house, the star facility to, to test that motorcycle for the intro for Yamaha. And it is, it's a way better Yamaha. The only thing that for off-road, it kind of doesn't have the straight line stability of last year's bike. And I was talking with Trevor Stewart about the difference between the motorcycles and Trevor Hunter nailed it. Like he, everything that he said was pretty much right on. And Trevor Stewart coming back from a injury, coming back to the Pervine Yamaha team and trying to get back up to speed. As we know, these guys, 
that you fall off of just a little bit and you got not only a brand new bike to to bring along but then you you got to come back from that wrist injury that he had and so it's going to be really interesting on how that bike performs out here um i think some of the other guys are running last year's model i think his teammate uh justin heff is ready riding a 2022 model um so it'll be interesting to see which one works better in these kind of conditions? Yeah, believe it or not, still due to the pandemic, they told me under that tent that it's hard to get the 2023. They said they hope more are available, but they said we got a whole heap of 2022s and we like them as well. So they have a ton of bikes under that blue tent. Well, guys, we are almost set to go with call-ups. Thank you so much for joining us. Like I said, share it with a friend. Let them know we are live on the Dirt Bike YouTube channel. Thank you so much to our friends over at Dirt Bike Magazine. We appreciate it greatly. A wonderful day here since city las vegas prim nevada but it is hot i mean smoking hot and this is going to be a battle of endurance we're going to go 90 minutes maybe longer than 90 minutes they schooled me up they said look we don't care if somebody comes across 129 29 we're sending them out for another lap yeah and, and definitely i i was i was play played uh, a little bit into that yesterday i had to ride with uh giacomo and justin seeds and uh, Cole Martinez in the, the 30 class and yeah, we came across and it was 45 I think when when I came across is like 45 17 or 44 17 and I had to do another lap That last lap was probably the, <laughs> the hardest thing that I had to do this morning I got lucky because I came, I was actually the first person that came across after 45 but yeah when you see that clock and it goes to You only have a couple seconds left and you got to do one more lap. That's pretty. It's pretty brutal Big shout out to Taz Insurance. You're taking a look at the drone cam high above Prim. So much racing history here, guys. We do the qualifying for best in the desert, off in the distance. There's a short course track. We used to run the Lucas Series there. So much desert racing history, so much moto history. This is really a cool place. And due to the close proximity to Vegas, it just makes it extra special yeah no there's a lot of people that come to this event that don't come to some of the other events there's there was a concert at the casino last night there's so there's all kinds of stuff and that drone footage i mean that's pretty amazing that they can get the footage that they they get and it's one of those things to where that's not all the people that have been here there's people that have been here all weekend long that have already got their racing done and they're out of here so you got to see the the pro pits the live pro pits the big factory support that's in the NGPC series. There's a lot of people that have stuck around just to watch the pro race. So, you know, it, it's going to be a barn burner of a event this afternoon and in, in more ways than one, because it, it's hot. It's really hot. And so, like we said before, hydration, hydration, and hydration. Yeah, no doubt about it, guys. We are going to see some new faces. Like we said, Vegas seems to bring a lot of different entries out. I laugh because we go up to the Strip, the drag racing facility, and the Pro Stock motorcycle teams. All of a sudden, there's 30 people that want to go to Vegas. And I'm like, <laughs> I didn't see you guys in Valdosta, Georgia, in the cornfields. But everybody wants to come here. Prim is so special. As I said, hot as can be. But speaking of hot as can be, nobody on this tour hotter than the Red Bull KTM rider, the three-time defending champion, Dante Oliveira absolutely returned to form and dominated in 29 Palms. Can Dante do it again here in Prim? Yeah, you know what? The, the, the brothers have a really good program. They're, they're from a little bit in Northern California, and they push each other. The, both now with, with Mateo coming up, and he's pushing Dante, and it's, they're great people to talk to, great people to uh, just be around. But they are pushing each other, and they're pushing the sport and the series to go faster. It sounds like we have uh, we have some sick riders with uh, Surratt being a little bit sick or under the weather this this weekend. But there's a whole host of other riders that can win this event. It's kind of kind of like Supercross right now. It's there's four or five riders that have a legitimate shot if they get a start. There's more than that here. And that makes for great horsepower theater for you to sit back and relax, whether you're here live or whether you're watching from the comfort of your device or in your living room. Let us know in the comments. The response has been great. We appreciate you guys and all the positivity with this live coverage. This is it. This is what 2023 is all about. Live streaming, bringing the action to you. People watching not only from all over the nation, but all over the world. I know that for a fact because shout out to Jack Simpson's father who's watching us all the way from Australia. How about that? <laughs> 
That's pretty cool. I mean, it definitely, these live streams are, are kind of becoming the future of events like this to where people can't see this all over the world, but they get to see it now. I mean, it's definitely, we, we tell people about it. You got to wait for Cycle News to come out on Wednesday or, or something along those lines so you can find out what, what's happening. This is something that people are seeing all of this stuff right now. So it's, and this course is, they, they've changed it up a little bit from how it normally is where you're seeing right now with the, the riders getting ready for staging. Um, the start has moved. It used to be back in the, the corner over there, um, just out of view on the other side of the truck track, but they've changed the start to the other side um, so that we can, have, we can see a little bit more of it and you kind of come over a rise right off there and then you go into the truck track a little bit, not as much as what you used to, but um, then you kind of go out into the, uh, into the, the desert the unforgiving desert, that's for sure. So it's definitely a little bit different this weekend, and uh, it's kind of nice to see. As you can see, these riders ready to go. They're probably like, come on, let's do these call-ups. We were told there will be a slight delay. They want to do a little bit of track watering. That's something we haven't had to worry about early in the season due to all this unprecedented rain that we had out west. Conditions were absolutely perfect. Uh, a few rounds ago in Glen Helen, we were dealing with snow. Boy, we've come a long way since snow, haven't we? Yeah, and it's definitely getting in front of the watering situation. This race always has um, the issues. It's we're in the middle of the desert, people. <laughs> like this is something to where you, you kind of you're gonna have dust. You're gonna this stuff is gonna come into play. I mean, the last time we came to you was from 29 Palms. Even there, it's the middle of the desert. There's gonna be dust. There's gonna be no matter how much water you get, it's gonna get dusty. And this course actually. There's a lot of places that kind of go right next to each other. So right off the start, we're going to see there might be dust on the first wave of guys that are coming back right about the, the part to where they were scanning. But as you can see, look, it goes back next to each other a lot, and they've spread it out. But there's, dust is going to be an issue with this race, no matter what. Seven miles of testing, taxing, laborious racing. Spoke to Kai Aiello moments ago. He came home on the box and 29 palms in the 250 category. He said, clean vision, clean air is so important. And I said, boy, there's really only way to, one way to get that. And he said, yes, you got to get a good start. You got to get out in front or you could get mirrored back there in the dust. Yeah, and if, if you get out front, that's 50% of it. Like You get that start, you get out front, you don't have to deal with people going down, you don't have to deal with the dust, you don't have to deal with anything except for your own race and the, own, and the mistakes that you make. But if you're, if you're back in third, fourth, fifth position, there's gonna be dust, there's gonna be people swapping, you're gonna have to take lines that maybe you wouldn't have normally t taken, but it's definitely, start is key, especially here, and then endurance. This is, this is where you're gonna find out who's been training and who hasn't been. So it's, but then again, you're gonna see, like we were talking about at 29 Palms, there is gonna be people that are more used to this kind of speed. I know uh, Dalton Shire yesterday, more of a national hare and hound guy, does do GPs, but just like at 29 Palms, it's gonna be a thing to where he's used to dealing with dust. He's used to dealing with these types of conditions. It's it's hot. He's in the middle of the desert all the time. So. Sure, he's got to have an advantage. I mean, Dalton, one of the standout racers at the best in the desert series. This is where they qualify for Vegas to Reno. That's their flagship race. And think about that. He will start in Vegas and run all the way up to Reno. That's that's a six, seven hour day on a motorcycle. So he's used to pushing the pace out there. The question is, though, when you talk about what will be a, a 90 minute sprint compared to that, Who's going to be able to stay on the gas and keep it pinned? That's what they told me in 29 Palms. They said a lot of this is just pure courage. Who can keep it pinned the longest? Yeah, and, and that's, like you said, it, it's, a, it's a little bit different animal. You're not on the bike as much, as, as long, but the intensity level is more. So it, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. Breathing, going from, from a uh, more of a relaxed breathing atmosphere and everything to I got to go and I got to go right now. You don't think about it, but you start holding your breath, and then you get arm pump, and then all kinds of other stuff starts happening, and, and you derailed your own race. And so it's definitely something to where you, those guys have to think about what they're doing, and we might see somebody that comes from out of left field to take this event win in the premier class. As we get closer and closer to call-ups here again, big thanks, Ross Fitz Productions and NGPC, everybody making this live stream possible. Want to thank our new sponsors on board. As I said, you're taking a look at the Taz Insurance Drone Cam. Also, Rad Custom Graphics with us. City Service with us here this weekend. 
They've got the Nick Garvin cam, the Nick Garvin updates. We also want to extend a big thank you to 1-800-DENT-DOC. Get a ding, give them a ring. And, Mark, I know we've all had that unfortunate incident <laughs> at the grocery store. Parking too close, somebody gives you a door ding, you got to call 1-800-DENT-DOC. Yeah, definitely. It's we've always had, we've had, everybody's had somebody run a cart into them or a door oh. ding or, or oh. something like that. And it's kind of, you know, a paintless dent removal is 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 one of those things to where you don't think about and you don't think, "Oh, that's what I'm going to do." But there's a lot of it going on. It's it's one of those things to where if in high school if they would told me, "Hey, you're going to do this this 1-800 dent doctor thing and you're going to make a lot of money." Like, well, I, I love I the sponsor. Know Hopefully I never have to use it again. What irks me, I'm the kind of guy, I will park a mile away at the grocery store or at the gym. And then sometimes somebody still parks right next to me. It's like, man, there was a thousand spots. But that is the jungle we live in out there. So, guys, if anything happens, make sure you dial up 1-800-DENT-TALK. We appreciate all their support. As we get closer and closer, I'll wait to get official word of just how close we are to call-ups as we get you set for round number six of the National Grand Prix Series. This is it, Mark. In terms of a, a championship sprint, we are more than halfway now. This is when, if anybody in this 450 class has an opportunity to stop Dante, now is when you got to make a move. And Ryan Surratt has been very, very impressive. I know he impressed you and I at the two-stroke race, almost won that thing mm -hmm. on an older bike. Can Surratt step up? They say sometimes your best races are when you're not feeling good. I wonder if that could be this type of day for him. Yeah, no, and it definitely could be. And there's there's a whole host of other guys. You got Pervine's guy, Pervine's Yamaha team. You have the his his brother. You have his brother out there that, that can step up and, and beat everybody, just like he did in the 250 class. You have the the brand new Sherco team that I think they're only running 250s. But then then you have the the Kawasaki team of Robbie Bell's team and the the Precision Concepts team. You have all kinds of people that that can be up there, and then you got Cole Martinez on the the SLR Honda, and I got to race against him yesterday, and he's fast. <laughs> all right, I can't wait. I know you can't wait either. So without further ado, let's get you right to our call ups, guys. And of course, our call ups brought to you by Rad Custom Graphics. Let's meet this field. All right, everyone, welcome out to round six of the NGPC C series hosted by Shamrocks. We're out here at Buffalo Bills and Prim. We're going to get started right now with the pro women starting off on the number 51, riding on her factory supported KTM, multiple time Loretta Lynn's champion, multiple time District 37 champion, the 51 of Michaela Nielsen. Moving into the second point standing right now. Riding on the Three Brothers Hatch Racing Gas Gas. The 454, your 2022 West Hair Scrambles Pro Women Champion, Ava Silvestri. Currently sitting in third, looking to move up. Riding on the RPM KTM, your 2021 West Hair Scrambles Pro Women Champion, it's a 293 of Caitlin Jacobs. Moving on into our Pro 250 class. These kids are getting faster and faster every year. Starting off right now, coming out of Australia, your current points leader, the number one seven on Pervine's Yamaha. Jack Simpson! We have another international sitting in second place right now. This guy's done more international races than you can count. Riding on an SLR Honda, the 653 K Tinkler Walker! Coming off his first Pro 250 win at 29 Palms. This kid keeps getting faster every round, looking to collect another podium, potentially another win. Riding on the RPF KTM, it is the 192 of JP Alvarez. Sitting in fourth on his three brothers hatch racing, Husker Vana. 
This guy's collected a lot of podiums this year and looking to get another one. Here comes Kai Ayalo! Sitting in fifth, also riding under the Three Brothers Hatch Racing Tent, this time on a KTM. We've got the 562 of Colton Eck! All right, now we're moving into the big boys. Starting off with our current de reigning, defending three-time NGPC Series Pro 450 champion, the number one on the factory KTM, Dante Oliveira! <laughs> Sitting in second, Looking to keep moving up. He's collected a couple wins this year. Riding under the JCR Honda. We've got the 77 of Ryan Surratt. Currently sitting in third. Also riding under uh, the Honda. We got the SLR Honda, Loretta Lynn champion, number 34. Cole Martinez! Currently sitting fourth in points. Riding on the factory Husker Vana. Looking to collect another podium as he just got third place back at 29 Palms. We got the number 50, Austin Walton! This guy's done more racing than you can count. Looking to get back up on the top step. One of our 2018 NGPC champion, number 100, Zach Bell. been introduced it's about time to drop the green flag on this race but before that let's step away for one second we'll be right back as round number six of the ama national grand prix series will return after this John Kilmartin here with Kilmartin Racing. Great new adventure here with Reason this year. I'm excited to uh, partner up with them. It's going to be an exciting new year. We have some great riders this year. Stop by. I'd love for you guys to check out the new Reason sunglasses. We're really looking forward to the adventure with them.
ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three. These great resources the eruption of a God-given ability. One, zero, all engine one. Sherco off-road motorcycles are factory from the showroom floor. We offer a full lineup of two and four-stroke motorcycles, ready for your next adventure. Visit ShercoUSA.com for more information. Welcome you back to this mecca of speed, Prim Nevada. It is round number six of the AMA National Grand Prix Championship Series. Jack Rapella and Mark Tilly here with you. We're about ready to drop the green flag. A few more things to get to before we get there. I know these riders are ready because, Mark, as we said, it is hot today in Las Vegas. Yeah, it's definitely hot out here. You can see the umbrellas, the sun beating right down on those guys. It's uh, definitely something that they got to be prepared for. Well, before we go any further, let's toss it down to the third member of our broadcast team, Nick Garvin. What do you have for us, Nick? The starting line, these guys are getting ready to go. It's a really hot one. We've been talking about the heat and stressing. These guys need to stay hydrated. Unfortunately for the 77, he got the flu this week. He's been fighting it. We tried to get him a bag last night to get him hydrated. He's second in the points. He's basically Dante's biggest competitor, and unfortunately for him, he's under the weather. He's got to really hope for guys like Justin Heft, Trevor Stewart, Talon LaFontaine to get in between them to keep that point standing alive. And really got to hopeful that those guys really get in between. Anyways, got to say a prayer for him. Anyways, back to you guys in the booth. Thank you very much, Nick, and thank you, City Service, for cool. backing that portion of our broadcast. Talking about Ryan Surratt, what is that racing cliche? Your championships are won on your worst days. I've heard a few folks say that one, huh? Yeah. Exactly, and this is a time to where Ryan's a tough competitor. He's going to step up. He's going to do everything he can until he just can't do it anymore. So well, I know, speaking about the heat, it looked like Trevor Stewart was wearing a cooling vest. I'm not sure if he's going to race with that or if he's going to take that off uh, 
and reveal the, the Fast House ensemble that he has underneath. But right now, number 75, it looks like he has a cooling vest on to keep his core body temperature uh, down and uh, hopefully be able to kind of go through that. Oh, he is. He's taking it off, as you can see right there. But it's definitely a good idea. It's something bringing something over from the, the stick and ball sports that, you know, especially the football guys, you see that a lot in football and, and kind of go from there. You don't really see a lot of that stuff when it comes to the off-road racing and, and motocross racing. We're in the desert. It's balmy. I would use every single trick at my disposal. I was a little taken aback when the pilot told us last night, welcome to Las Vegas. It's 95 degrees at 10 p.m. You never know what you're going to get here. But this is what we talked about, okay. the conditioning of these riders being top notch and all the work that they put in on the exercise bike in the gym over the off season. That all comes into play right now. And oftentimes, I remember talking about another great cliche and a great quote. I think it was my wrestling coach who used to say, fatigue makes cowards of us all. <laughs> and it is so true that it's not necessarily the rider who's the most talented that's going to win this. It's the rider that can make it to the end. Yeah, and the rider that's the most prepared when it comes to that stuff. You don't realize that the little things of staying hydrated on that makes your your muscles a lot more flexible it makes it to where that you're when you go down if you go down you don't tense up there's a lot of stuff that and then it makes your recovery that much easier so hydration and and fuel for your your body is definitely something that riders have to take into consideration and riders at this level kind of already know that so but it's sometimes you know, a little bit of slacking, a little bit of, oh, hey, I don't want to drink that water right now or, or get that Pedialyte in my system. So it's definitely staying on top of that rider to make sure that, hey, even if, it, even if you get through the event, you have to recover afterwards. And talking with some of these top-notch trainers and fitness gurus out there, this process didn't start this morning. This started days ago with the, the carb mm -hmm. up, the sleep, the nutrition, the hydration. They have been preparing for this so that these riders are on top of their game. Because like I said, these conditions, totally different than what we saw in 29 Palms a few weeks ago. That was a wide open, very fast course. This one, much more tighter, much more technical. It's sandy, it's rough, not quite as fast and what I'm hearing from a lot of these riders is it will get brutal yeah and it's it's brutal now like I was out there this morning a couple hours ago and it was brutal when I was out there and I could just imagine now I actually having to have a couple more races and then start this but hey this is why these guys get paid the big bucks this is why they they have the factory suspension this is what this is the times that it's it's time to step up you know what's so cool, too, is I was walking around the pits this morning, I, I, and I love doing this at the Supercross pits. I love visiting with all the factory teams, and then I like going over seeing the privateers. And you got a lot of guys here working out of the back of a van or a pickup truck, doing it old school. And I'm talking guys that are uber talented. So it would be cool to see one of those gentlemen step up today. You just never know when it's going to be somebody's day. Well, and, and that's the cool part about this series. We always talk about it being a family event, a very family-friendly event. I mean, I, we're coming here with, I mean, just myself. I come here with, with my family. My parents are still involved with a lot of the racing that myself and my kids are doing. We have friends. The, the Tryons are here. And then we actually have uh, Justin from... Uh, from <laughs> Sorry. We have Justin from IWC that's here with his son, and he's racing and doing stuff. And it's definitely one of those things to where it's a family atmosphere, and it's great. All the officials here have families. Like, it's just a fun series to be a part of. And there's a class for everybody to race. So, Jack, the next one. Maybe we throw you on one of these motorcycles. You come out a little bit early, and uh, you show us what you got. Well, I better work on my conditioning. I'm not so sure my 2002 KX250 is ready to endure these conditions, but I would sure try. It looks fun. At least for a lap or two, I could go out there and hang. I, I will make sure you have a 2023 model ready to go. All you got to do is give me gear sizes, and you show up and ride. Whoa, that's a heck of an offer. Thank you very much. Mark Tilly is a man who can make things happen, and I learned that about you at the two-stroke race again, Glenn Helen. Boy, you had some cool bikes out there. We got, we got to see the world's only YZ125 Super Mini, a bunch of big bore bikes. So cool to see some of the tricks that were happening in the pits. Yeah, we, we get to do a lot of cool stuff at the magazine. I mean, we get to, we get to make sure that we, we kind of come up with a, an envision something, and then we get to make it happen. And if we can't make it happen, then, okay, then we come back and we get comments and, oh, you didn't make that happen, that didn't work, and all kinds of stuff. So it's definitely one of those things to where, in some cases, it's a dream job and we get to do stuff. 
stuff. And, you know, we did to work with BBR Motorsports and Carson Brown and Dwayne Brown and build something like that. And then be able to ride it and go, wow, that was fun. What are we going to do next? So it's, it's definitely lots of fun to do. I mean, Ron Lawson, uh, one of the other editors at the magazine, is always in my ear and doing stuff. And it's just a fun job to be a part of. It is a job, but it's a fun job. Uh, well said. It is a labor of love. It is all about passion. And I think that speaks to all the riders and all the families you're taking a look at right now in the Taz Insurance Drone Cam. We are getting close. Ladies and gentlemen, well, at this time, we would like to pay tribute to this great country that allows us the freedom to go out and enjoy our passions. Let's send it down to today's national anthem. From a sizzling hot day in Prim, Nevada, let's go racing, ladies and gentlemen. Round number six of the National Grand Prix Series about ready to kick off. Oh, I got chills. I can't wait. And I'll tell you, during the National Anthem, our TV compound almost blew away. <laughs> Bad news for us, but good news for these riders. You can take a look at Old Glory flying up there with a nice strong breeze. What that means is something to keep them cool and also something to help vision. That'll help clear out the dust. Yeah, it'll definitely help clear out the dust. And there, there is going to be some dust out there no matter how much water they get on this course. Like we said, we are in the middle of the desert. And the wind's kicking up, and that's going to be a factor later on. Might be a factor for us. If we go silent all of a sudden, that means we, we blew away. We'll do the best that we possibly can, guys. But we talked about how important vision is going to be. They watered the track, but we know when you get here in the desert, that's only going to last for so long. Maybe I can tell you from the desert races we've done out here, that's really only going to last 20 minutes or so. Yeah, maybe that. Maybe. Maybe that. So it looks like we have, have them all firing up. This is going to be a dead engine start, so what they're letting them do right now is warm up their bikes, get their bikes ready to go, and then most of those bikes are push-button start. Well, I would say mo most, almost all of them are um, push-button starts, so they just kind of push that button and go, but it's kind of interesting. This is the first year that they've done this, that it's a thing to where they have to push that button and they have to get that start, so it's making it to where this is the biggest thing that they have to do is, is adapt to a dead engine start. So it's definitely a good thing. And we certainly want to thank all of our great sponsors out there, the Pioneer Vehicles as well. Big thanks to them as we get set to get this party started, ladies and gentlemen. Round number six. Thank you so much for joining us live on the Dirt Bike Magazine YouTube channel. Mark, big thanks to you and your team for sharing that platform with us. No problem. We're all about helping this series grow. We've been a part of it for a long time, and the more people we have racing, the more people we have people out here riding motorcycles and having fun. So you're talking about those vehicles, those those side by sides and stuff like that. There's a lot of those out here, and it takes a lot of those vehicles to put on an event like this. You, you got to get water around, you got to get people around, you got to get stuff going. So you know, big big thanks to those sponsors and big thanks to uh, the people involved on on getting us those things to where we can make the series happen. 
Last time out at 29 Palms, it was Dante Oliveira with the win, followed by Cole Martinez and Austin Walton. Who will step up this round? Dante Oliveira, your three-time champion, leads the points. He has a 21-point lead over Ryan Surratt, looking to close the gap. Cole Martinez also looking to make his move towards the championship run as he has 41 points back heading into this thing. Anything can happen, ladies and gentlemen, as we close in on this dead engine start. Yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting to see who gets out there and who, who gets off the line with a, with a good start, whose bike fires right away and gets out there. But any of those guys on that line right there, there's half that line could win this race. So it's definitely a, a good thing to be able to bring that live. There's, there's some more hare and hound guys. I, I think that's a, a Pearson that I see, 762 there. Um, Tyler Lynn from the the number 24 from the Precision Concepts team rode a national hare and hound against Dalton Shirey last weekend and, and gave him a run for his money. So we have some guys out there that, that can do this. And then the 250 class, there's, they're in the same thing. There's, there's five or six guys that can be up front and could win this thing. And then those guys are going to pass up into the 450, the first line as well, because the first few guys are going to be moving. Last minute instructions and checks being given by our staff, making sure everybody's ready to go. And look at this field, jam-packed. Big thanks to all of the riders for coming out. And you're just taking a look at a few of the classes. As Mark told you, they've been racing here all weekend, all different categories. And now it's time for our preeminent 450s, 250s, the women all set to go. We're about to find out who's going to get the whole shot. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to go racing here from Prim. Yeah, and it should be any any second now, um, that official walking off the course and letting all the riders know. Looks like the light went green, and who do we have? We are off, and look at the dust kicking up already. Who will get the whole shot? It's a drag race into the first turn. Somebody with a comfortable lead. I see a green Kawasaki. That looks like Zach Bell. Wow, that's huge for Zach Bell and that team. They told me major suspension changes from 29 Palms, but look at this. We got a battle already for the lead. Here comes the Yamaha on the inside. And that's either the, the Pervine's Yamaha of Justin Heft, or that could be the brand new Yamaha of Trevor Stewart. But this might be that race that we see Zach Bell come out of. Here comes our second start. A little bit of elevation there on the beginning. That's something you don't see on the Supercross hole shots, that's for sure. And look at the speed. It is an unmitigated drag race from here. Wide open, a test of skill, a test of nerves. And this is that critical point in the race where you can pass three, four guys on one straightaway. Yeah, and that's another Kawasaki up front. Looks like we have the women going off right now. Again, guys, we do have our live timing and scoring up on the AMA National Grand Prix Championship site. We'll give you our update the best we can. Mark's got a close watchful eye, though. What do you see on this one, Mark? And that was a huge hole shot from the number 51 KTM rider. Yeah, it wasn't hard to ascertain who got the hole shot there as we get set for another dead engine start. Gotta imagine a real disadvantage for these classes going off behind. They're gonna have a tough time with vision throughout the day, I imagine. Yeah, and, and now that the, the course is, is, you can see that the dust and everything going on, man, that was a big line. Um, but you can see the, the dust and everything. So those guys that are about mid-pack are dealing with that dust already, but there's that is pushing out. The good thing is that there's a lot of wind but that's pushing out onto other parts of the course as well. Hopefully it dissipates by the time it gets to those other parts though. Another massive hole shot there for the Yamaha rider, but look at the Honda rider in hot pursuit. That's the drag race that I talked about, wide open. That's fifth gear straightaway right there over the big tabletop. As we are two and three wide and we are underway with round number six of the AMA National Grand Prix Series. Can't wait to get our first look at the running order. It is a seven mile course. Anything can happen when you talk about the long way that we have to go to reach a conclusion here, it's even to reach a conclusion to lap number one. It could be a rough first lap for a lot of these competitors. Exactly, and it looks like we have a, a gun gainslinger Kawasaki out front in the, the 250 class, so that looked like uh, number 39 that was out there. And uh, uh, I think that's Cole Zeller. A good, good, there we go. Look at the running order, big shout out to uh, it looks like Campbell running out in front, followed, nope, okay, well, unofficial for now, ladies and gentlemen, we will get the order 
straight for you, but we'll give you the best results that we possibly can. We know that Trevor Bell, Zach Bell, Trevor Stewart and Zach Bell up there close to the top. Dante Oliveira didn't see exactly where he was, but as soon as we get eyes on it, we will continue one yeah, thing. We're gonna have to see, we're gonna have to wait to see when they come through the first uh, timing and scoring after the first lap. Um, this is just the entry list that, that you might be seeing right now. Um, but yeah, they got, they got about 15 minutes maybe, um, maybe a little bit less than that, um, before they get around this seven, almost eight mile course. So they're, as it weaves back and forth, um, can't see who we're looking at. I don't think that that would be the, the premier clash yet, but. Well, I do like the countdown clock. That is pretty cool. That gives us an idea of just how long We've got to go. Thank goodness the riders can't see that. That would be a little bit intimidating, I would think, knowing <laughs> how long you're just getting. You're only four minutes into this thing. There is actually a countdown clock at the, the finish line oh where the boy. scoring is. There's a countdown clock, so you, you know just about how long you have to suffer. So, and, and like we were saying earlier, when you come around that, oh, rider going off the course. Whoa, getting a little bit, a oh. little bit uh, bucks sideways. But, yeah, so there is a an actual countdown clock or it's not really a countdown clock it shows you a cumulative times so when you come around and and you have an hour and 29 minutes and you gotta go one more lap it's not that much fun <laughs> no no and that's what i i asked you last time it wasn't nearly this hot but i wonder this time if somebody is close to that 90 minute mark and they got a comfortable lead if they would think about checking up a little bit just to just to make sure i know i know i would if it was close if it was on the edge if it was hey do another lap or hit the brakes for 15 seconds who knows if we'll see any of those games i know the mechanics and the crew chiefs will be staying right on top of that one talking about their job and how difficult it is too i heard suspension set up here a lot different than 29 palms yeah it, it's it's definitely you have bigger holes um not not the speeds but you have bigger holes um, just like what that rider's going through right there, it's the, the tops are a little bit more cupped out than what the bottoms are, and so you try to stay on the bottom, but you have the speed that carries you to the outside. So, you know, this, this Shamrocks Club doing a great job getting the water on the course out in the back section, at least for the start of this pro event, because we're not seeing a bunch of dust everywhere and people having to slow down for that dust so we'll see if that continues and see if uh see if they can stay ahead of that and and keep watering yeah we'll see who comes across first here as we close in on a finish of lap number one open pro out there pro two pro women motorcycles all over the racetrack mark if i put you on the hot seat i don't even know if you're going to want to answer this what what manufacturer what make has the advantage here in prim is there a specific bike that you think stands apart with these conditions? I, you know what, I don't think so. I think, I mean, me personally, I, I rode a Kawasaki this weekend, um, KX450, it fits my riding style, so I can ride that bike and, and feel comfortable on that bike. But with these kind of conditions, all the bikes are so good nowadays. It's kind of whatever, whatever color you want to pick is, is a good color, and then just customize it to yourself. So it looks like we're following the Pro 2 class, that might be JP Alvarez on his RPM KTM that, that's up there, um, and then that might be one of the SLR Hondas that's up there. That, that might be the top guys in the, in the Pro 2 class. Um, I'm not really sure we can't get, the, the, as good as the drone footage is, we can't get close enough to see those, those numbers, and we'll have to wait for them to come around to where we know where everybody's running in, in succession. But it did look like that, that, was, that was JP, and you know that JP and, and Jack, all those guys are going to be up towards the front. Um, so there's some of the dust that we we're talking about coming into play. But you know, with this wind, it's it's dissipating really really quickly. So you know, it, it's definitely great for the riders and, and great for racing. That will help. That will help clean out the vision. Yes, the SLR Honda team, Slam Life, Life Racing, they're doing a great job. Cade Walker, Cole Martinez ready to go. We'll keep an eye on Ryan Surratt too, as we said, not feeling good. 26 year old out of Corona, California, trying well, to close in on that points gap. Look at this shot. And that's Zach Bell out front. Wow. So this might be that race that Zach says, when you see him up front and you see him, him going good, he's back. So we, and we know at 29 Palms, he ran up front for a while and then he kind of had to, to succumb to some of the faster riders. But 
Zach is fast. When he's on, he's on. And I can contest to that precision concept suspension because that's what I was running all weekend, and it works great out there. It was great to spend some time with Zach Bell in 29 Palms, and he really opened up about his injury and how that has been such a hindrance and how that really slowed him down. I mean, keep in mind, this 28-year-old, guys, he's finished fifth in, uh, fourth in Supercross before. That was his all-time best finish back in 2016 in Oakland. Took a fourth. I mean, he is an absolute stud. He said it's just all about getting healthy, recovering from that ACL surgery. And he says right now he's feeling a lot better, and the results are showing. Yeah, and, and definitely coming back from an injury and, and coming back and, and getting back up to this pace. When when he uh, left this this series due to injury a couple years ago, he was going really good. He was dominating this series. Now that was before. The, the, the current champion came up, but he was definitely showing them how, how to go fast. So, and he's got a decent lead. It looks like that's a, a Pervine's Yamaha in second. Hopefully we can get a, a handle on who that is. Um, but that is a Pervine's Yamaha in second. So Zach's out front, Pervine's Yamaha's in second. And then uh, looks like they're, it's a colorful group behind him. So it could be a Honda or a, a gas gas or it could be all kinds of different stuff. Well, that is definitely the 100 of the Chaparral Precision Concepts Kawasaki out of Riverside, California of Zach Bell putting together a ride today. He was third in Glen Helen last month, but like I said, you couldn't talk about much different conditions. It was almost snowing in Glen Helen, hot as can be here, but Zach Bell looks on, looks to be forgetting all about that ACL injury. Look at the, this is a great shot too. This puts you a little bit inside the rider's perspective of just how tough vision will be. And this is from a guy who's out front and it's yeah. still getting dusty and tough to see. Yeah, and, and in, in that particular case, like you see him right here, he's going over a certain part of the course. And depending on the way that the wind's blowing out there, that he could be making dust for himself when he comes back the other way on the course. So there's definitely, definitely some some stuff that you gotta put into factor that you don't really think about. Right now they're going through the hot pits, so they kind of come over a little uh, the little rise that they jumped over in the beginning, and then they're they're actually on the pavement right next to the where all those easy ups and in, in all their pits were set up, and then they'll come back out over that little rise or see there there we go that gives you a good idea of what the pro pits are all about and then they come in and right before timing and scoring and come through so hopefully we'll update right now and we'll be able to tell you what position everybody's in so yeah we got zach bell out front justin heff on his Pervine yamaha in second dante Oliveira on his ktm mateo his brother right behind him dalton shirey on the the Husky factory effort, Ryan Surratt up there. Um, and then we got Trevor Hunter, Talon LaFontaine, and Cole Martinez. How about Trevor Hunter jumping right back into this thing on the 1-800 Dent Dock bike and already running up there top 10. I, I asked him, I said, man, he was out there. He does such a great job working media for this series, has helped build the website. But I said, you got to get out. You're too fast to not be out there. He is showing us right now that he's still got the speed. Zach Bell really showing us, too. I'll tell you this, too. Zach Bell's not going to get hot. He's originally from Tallahassee, Florida, so this is a walk in the park to him. I'll tell you West Coast folks out there, I got to tell you, having experienced both of them, 110 in the desert is no match for, like, 89 in Tallahassee, <laughs> Florida with humidity through the roof. There's another fast guy from those parts. His name's Ricky Carmichael, and I think it worked out pretty well for him training in those conditions. Exactly, exactly. And it's a it's a different kind of heat, different kind of stuff that you got to train for. And uh, so yeah, you get out of you get out of the shower there, and it feels like you never dry off. So. You're wet all day, all day long. It's tough. Yeah, we might have jumped the gun a little bit on the, the Trevor Hunter thing, as as stuff is is updating. Uh, I think Trevor's back in about 14th, but even that, 14th overall in this group. And Trevor's on a, I believe, a, a test motorcycle as well. I think he's on a KX450. All right, so I gave him some undue praise. Do I need to take that back? Now, uh, he's still a stud, right? Yeah, we, we don't want to take it back from him. He's out there. Like, that's half the battle is being out there. So, but it looks like we got, like I said, top, top 14 crossing the line. Um, 
And so we should be having the, the Pro 2 class come through really quickly. Running about 10 minutes a lap. Zach Bell was 10.28 last time by. Here is the big question. Can Bell hold it? Can he hold this or will that injury creep in? He's got a long way to go. You gotta believe though, from our vantage point, he's feeling pretty healthy out there. Yeah, he looks he looks like he's flowing. It, the bike's working good for him. Um, there's a lot of switchbacks and a lot of coming back. Like you can see the course going one way, one, um, and then those guys turn around and come back the other way. There's a lot of that kind of stuff out there. And this course, the the coverage doesn't do it any justice. That is rough. Like that. The, I wouldn't want to go out there right now. I had fun riding it earlier today, but that course is rough, and Zach looks like he's zigging and zagging and, and making stuff happen, and it's kind of what you have to do on a course like this. And, you know, he's got Robbie Bell over there, the Precision Concepts Kawasaki team, has that bike working really, really well. It, it's not bucking him anywhere. It's not throwing him around, and like I said, that, that course is really rough. We have the Justin Heff on the Pervine Yamaha. Um, right behind him and then like I said the, the two Oliveira brothers oh no now it looks like Dante's Dante's in third Shirey got around Mateo and then we have another factory Husky guy in Austin Walton so Cole Martinez running about seventh right in front of Tyler Lynn um, we'll see if Cole can make up some time I know that I got to ride a little bit behind him yesterday and he's got some really good line selections when it, when the course gets rough so we know Cole's in shape so you might be able to get that SLR Honda a little bit higher, closer to that podium. 41 points back is Cole Martinez in the third spot of that Slam Life Racing Honda. So we'll keep an eye on him and see what he can do. Dante with a 21-point lead over Ryan Surratt, also keeping a close watch on him. To your point about how rough this course gets, I had the opportunity to go out there on a side-by-side for a desert racing, and if you get offline, there, there can be massive holes or silt beds and I remember asking some of the experts, how does this happen? We're in the middle of the desert. And they said some of those flash floods that creep up, like remember there was flash flooding in Vegas last year, that can do some crazy things to the terrain. Yeah, I, I could imagine the stuff that goes on out here in the desert. It's, it's the extremes. It's extremely cold and extremely hot. There's no in-between. And, and some of the stuff that can, can happen out here, like flash floods, will blow your mind. So. Yeah, apparently there isn't a spring in, in the desert, is there? We just went straight from winter right into the middle of summer. Well, and it seems like that's what we did in California and Nevada, <laughs> Arizona in general, that it went straight from, from winter into the summer, so. All right, guys, about 15 minutes gone here in round number six. Still got a long way to go. Big thanks for everybody joining us on the Dirt Bike Magazine YouTube channel. Like I said, please tell your friends we are on. Put it up on the big screen. Watch on your device. And big thanks to everybody, all of our great sponsors for making this happen. You will see their logos pop up on screen. Of course, Taz Insurance Services, NGPC. We got to say big thank you to the Dent Doc coming on. 1-800-DENT-DOC. If you get a ding, give them a ring. Also, City Service bringing us that Nick Garvin cam. We'll catch up with Nick all throughout this race. He's going to provide us with some valuable updates. And maybe we can get to hear what the Kawasaki team thinks about Zach Bell out there. You talk about a team with a whole lot of experience. I think Robbie Bell knows better than anybody, Zach's father, how to maintain a lead. <laughs> I don't think Robbie's that old, but uh, it just Robbie's the team manager. Team manager, uh, of course, Bob, that's Bob, the joke. Yeah, Bob Bell over there is uh, is definitely everybody's dad and takes care of everybody when, when it comes to suspension handling and stuff like that. But I, I, you know what? You could call Robbie Zach's dad because oh, the team he, does, dad. he does mentor him. And he, he's, Robbie has – I don't want to make him older yeah, than he is. Robbie has insane amounts of speed. And it looks like we got Zach Bell still out there, um, but Justin Heft on that Pervine's Yamaha is coming up. And then Dante the champ looks like he's, he's coming into – to his uh, end of the picture right there. So we'll see. Uh, it looks like maybe, maybe Zach's not that dominant figure that he was, and maybe he just got a good start and he's out there. But they're going to have to pass him, that's for sure. He's not, gonna, he's not just going to let him by. So, yeah. But, yeah, that Pervine's Yamaha of, of Heft looking really good. I, I know that he's, Heft has been on top of some of the other series that are on the West Coast here this year. So 
definitely had some success on that Pervine's Yamaha. No doubt about it. I know that puts a smile on Robbie Bell's face. We don't want to make him older than what he is. He's, everybody thinks it's my son. But, hey, Robbie Bell, Baja and works legend, huh? Absolutely. He has done a lot in this sport, and I talked to him earlier today. He was excited to go. He just said big suspension changes. That's the only thing really going on with this team. Yeah, and, and those bikes work really good. Um, and these 450s have so much power. I don't think, even on the line, I don't think there's a lot of bikes that are really built like what we'd see in Supercross or in Outdoor Nationals or anything like that. I think a lot of these guys are throwing on some pipes and different maps and stuff like that, but, you know, there is probably some some motor work going on in there, but, you know, it's not, they're moving the power around. They're not trying to get more because holding on to one of these beasts for an hour and a half is definitely not an easy job. Mm, especially with these conditions, it is hot. It is dusty. We've still got an hour and 11 minutes to go to crown a champion, to sort this one out. So much can happen here in round number six as we are right outside of Buffalo Bills Casino, Prim, Nevada, this racing hotbed. As I said, so much history here. Desert racing, not just when it comes to motorcycles, but when it comes to the off-road trucks, the side-by-sides. Used to do some short course racing here, and I love it. I hope they can keep this great facility alive. We know it's getting harder and harder to race in California. Unfortunately, we're losing racetracks left and right, so let's keep this great facility in Nevada open. I love coming here. It's awesome. Well, and, and up front in the, the Pro 450 class, we got Zach Bell, Justin Heff, Dante Oliveira. Um, it says Preston Campbell. If That's pretty amazing if, if Preston's up there and, and doing stuff on the live feed that we have. But uh, I don't see him on the live timing and scoring. But heavy hitters up front and then in the the pro two class i can't see it on the live timing and scoring but we can see it on the the side of the city service paving and grading thing with colt next jp alvarez axel pearson uh tyler belknap thomas dunn mason ottersburg mason the first uh shirko out there and then uh clayton roberts cody simpson clay hinchfeld and zachary curley Zach Bell had a six-second lead after one lap. We'll see if that lead grows or shrinks here in just a little bit. And Dante Oliveira, like we said, we look for him to close in as well. He was only, only 12 seconds back. We'll see if Dante can continue to put the heat on. Dante's such a smart and intelligent racer. From watching him, I've, I've learned that he, he's not somebody – that he really, really understands and is very aware of the length of the race. It does not seem like he's one to go out there and push it, and that would be the hallmark and something indicative of a man who's won this series three times in a row. Very, very patient rider. Exactly. And, and looking at it, we're, we're only two laps in. They haven't even completed their second lap. They're, they're coming through the, the pro pits right there. Um, those guys will go by their, their pit. That's where you'll see them dropping gas later, and uh, if they have a problem, they'll come in there and, and get the get it fixed from their teams. But yeah, we're only a lap now. We're two laps into this. Two so. laps in. Zach Bell, your leader, the former Supercross pro, the 28-year-old. Take some around. We'll get you some data here in just a little bit as we continue to give you updates. You know, as we said too, this this has to be one of the hardest most difficult forms of motorsport to cover. That's why, you know, some of you sitting at home, it is so awesome, but to, to really appreciate what it takes to pull this off, you're talking about covering a seven mile course, not the easiest thing in the world. So that's why we are thankful for the live data that we get, but we always tell you that everything that we get is unofficial until we sort it out and triple check it. But we got a pretty good idea of what's going on right now. Yeah, and, and when, we're, when we're saying stuff, like you said, when we're saying stuff, we're kind of going off what's on the screen in front of us. So. And then we're trying to look at the, the coverage that we're seeing and, and all that kind of stuff. So it's the section that we're looking at right now is a really high speed straightaway and it comes off of the, oh, we got heft right on top of, oh, almost made a pass. Whoa. That's oh, Bell and Heft. Here comes oh. the Yamaha to the inside. A little super cross action. Fans in attendance, let them hear it. We got a new leader, the Blue Crew bike out in front it is the 27 of justin heff and i i believe with that one i think we know that zach isn't 100 percent yet Ooh. because that if zach was 100 percent, i don't think they would have been heft would have been able to get him but 
He is riding last year's motorcycle, so he is not on a brand new Yamaha. Um, so like Trevor Stewart is doing a lot of testing and developing for the brand new Yamaha for that team. Justin is on last year's motorcycle, and he's making it look really good. Pervine's racing, they're going wild. Multiple blue bikes under that tent back there, and right now they have the lead. The question is, can Justin hold it? We shall see. You know, this reminds me of, uh, I know I know a lot of times in long distance racing and marathon racing, and, and the strategy is the same here. They would let somebody be the rabbit. And sometimes the fast guys don't make their move until they know they have to. And we know back there, just lurking and stalking is Dante Oliveira. So I would not be surprised if that orange bike doesn't creep into frame sooner rather than later. From Justin's perspective, he probably knows he's got to get out, build that lead as big as he possibly can to avoid everything that I'm saying and not give Dante that opportunity. Yeah, and and with racing with these guys, how, how elevated they, how much they're bringing the sport up, you can't wait. There, there is no sending a, somebody out there and then bringing them back in. If you don't get out there, they're so talented that they'll get too far away and you won't be able to catch those guys. So yeah, Justin's gonna get out there and go as fast as he possibly can for as long as he possibly can. So, and you do, you have those guys that, you know, a little bit of race craft comes in and okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold off. And then as soon as I get gas, I'm gonna go for everything. So, you know, it's gonna be interesting to watch this play out. Pervine Yamaha, they have been training so hard. What a stable they have over there. What a group of talented riders. We'll give you an update on our pro women too. Michaela continues to lead the way. No big surprise there as she continues to have another banner season. And it looks like uh, Dante got past Zach. So Zach might have put it all out there and, and trying to get his, his speed back up. Um, so it looks like he's dropped to third, but that's that's... Dante in second now, so the hunt is on. You're, we're gonna, he's gonna have to stay close to him and have to, Zach might be falling back a little bit, but he can't afford to let Justin get out there because you'd never catch back up. And that is the sports psychology aspect to this. You wonder, did Bell go out too fast? Did he get a cramp? Did he get arm pump? Does he have an issue with the motorcycle? Or, you know, th this is a long enough race that can he maybe regroup and, and salvage a good finish and get himself back in the mix? I don't know. These are all questions that will be answered over the next 64 minutes. Yeah, definitely. And there's, this is a section they're, they're going back. This is the farthest section from where we are at right now. And it comes back across right there. And then you'll see them make a, a left onto a pavement section. And that pavement section, you might, oh, it's not very long. It's not. That pavement section changes a lot of stuff. It changes the... the the tire you're gonna run and what you're gonna do. Just that little stretch of dirt, right, or that little stretch of pavement right there can change your race, so. Well, yeah, I would think uh, with the speed that they're going, that's gotta absolutely annihilate a knobby. Yeah, it, and it does, and, and it's, are you gonna run a sand tire? Are you gonna run a, a, a soft to intermediate terrain tire? I mean, there's there's multiple options. There's, there's definitely lots of stuff. Myself, I, I ran the new Dunlop Scoop sand tire, and yeah, after a weekend of racing, it was annihilated just from that from, from that little bit of of pavement section. It's we got knobs chunking off and stuff like that, and I, or it just wears the tire wears differently. So you got to kind of play into that, and that's that's the hard part about this series is there's lots of factors that you have to have when you when you come up and you're and you're doing stuff and you're setting up a bike. I mean, there's the, to guard away from this heat i run a boys and super cooler on my bike to make it run cooler and so there, there's definitely lots of stuff you have to have a larger ims tank to be able to run out there you have to have gpr stabilizer there's lots of stuff that goes into it's not just getting on a bike and, and going as fast as you can i love the diversity the dichotomy the intrigue i can tell you the, the mechanics probably don't like it so much could you imagine telling one of the supercross mechanics yeah uh, set this bike up for a long pavement straight away as well crazy because because like you said the tire that works well in those conditions that you're taking a look at right now with some pretty competitive racing may not be the conditions that are uh, i would say first and foremost what you want out there in the pavement yeah you gotta you gotta kind of Find that balance. If, if you can't find that balance, then you're out there and you're looking and you're going, okay, I, I need a balance. I can go fast in one area, 
but I can't go fast in the next area. So let's find a happy medium. And it, a bike setup is a huge thing for off-road because not only are you having to find that bike setup, but you have to ride that bike for an hour plus. And if you can't ride it for an hour plus, you can't make it to the finish, you can't win races. It's all about endurance, guys. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Again, he's Mark Tilly from Dirt Bike Magazine. I'm Jack Rapella from the Cycle Drag YouTube channel. Thank you so much. We appreciate all of our viewers. And we got to say the viewership has been off the charts on the Dirt Bike Mag YouTube channel. So thank you, guys. It's awesome. People watching us from all over the world. And that's what this series needs to attract eyeballs, to get the major sponsors that they want for racers themselves to be able to service their sponsors. There is no better way. Way. There is no better vehicle than what we're using right now. Live stream is where it is at. Well, and if you're watching this and, and you want to try this, there is a class for you. There's a class for your son. There's a class for your daughter. There's a class for your wife. There's a class for everybody out here. It's a weekend of racing and it's a great atmosphere. There's, I mean, all the way from peewee 50s to people that are 50. So there, there's definitely lots of racing going on. Great family atmosphere, great fun. Teaches a lot of hard work and discipline. I promise you this, you get involved in this sport, if your children get involved in this sport, they will not be lazy if they excel at this sport because it takes a lot of hard work when you're talking about the miles you gotta put in to compete, the training, the bike prep. There is always something to do. I think it's a good way to be raised yeah, in my humble definitely. opinion. Not only the fact of if your kids really like this, you got a reason to keep them in line. I use it to keep my kids in line. I mean, my, 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 my son, if, when he's acting up, or either one of them, when they're acting up, we, hey, we can take that motorcycle away. <laughs> so it's definitely something to, to get the kids into and something that, that you can kind of hold over their head a little bit when they're not being the nicest. Yeah, and shout out to all the great families out there making it happen providing this this joy, this passion for their family. I got to hear Travis Pastrana recently on a podcast. He said his dad would, would pick him up Friday after school, after working a full day, drive all the way to Florida for a race. Travis would sleep in the car. Oh, it's, it's heating up. It we is got, heating up. We got the champ and we got Justin Heff going Oh, at look at it. this, Dante. Coming up, we got a battle for the lead, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, speaking of Travis, here's a battle he would be proud of. Zach and Bell that, drifting back to third. This is your battle for the lead. Dante Oliveira and, and Justin Heff. And they're coming into what we would call the motocross section right now. Um, Who has the advantage there, Dante or Justin? You know what? Nowadays, it, I don't think either one has an advantage. Justin did do Supercross and Outdoor Nationals. I think he was a part of the, the Troy Lee team when they were back when they were on uh, KTMs. Um, but I, you know what? With this kind of stuff... You can't really make, the, I mean, that looks like the, the desert section anyways. So we're, we're still in the middle of the desert. I don't think any, either one of them has a uh, advantage here. But you, you see Dante creeping up. You know Justin knows he's there. Mark, take me inside the mind of a racer. You're leading this thing. It's only a third of the way through. You felt pretty comfortable. And then all of a sudden, here comes the three-time champ right on your rear wheel. You don't want to push yourself into a mistake or feel too much anxiety, but you also want to hold on to that lead. What is going through the mind of Justin Heft right now? What, he, what is he trying to do? It, 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 there could be two things. He could be, okay, hey, I've, I've been pacing myself. Now I need to go faster because I'm getting caught. Or it could be he could be thinking, how do I go faster? This guy's catching me. So all of that stuff, you, you kind of want to get up and, and put a wheel in there and, and let them know that you're there. Maybe rev your engine a little bit if you're Dante. But, you know, I, I would prefer to be Dante right now um, because he could see where Justin's going. He could see what's happening with him. He could see if he's making mistakes and kind of judge how hard he's going to push. But, you know, Justin could, could just react and, and lay down something fast and break Dante. You, you, you never know. But, I mean, he's a three-time champ. I, I don't know if you're going to break him mentally. But, this, and then this stuff right here, this is, it, it, you can't see it on the live feed, but all that's really rough. That tabletop that they're jumping is huge. Like, and then they kind of make the right-hand turn and, this section is really, really hard packed and really slippery. So tire selection coming in again, and then they kind of, this is the, the first section of going off back into the desert. They're, they're going as fast as they possibly can right there. 
And we'll have to get some updated data, too. But with that drone shot, courtesy of Taz Insurance, I, it seems like they're checking out. I don't see third place back there uh, anywhere close. We'll give you the exact margin. But right now, Dante just patiently studying, stalking, not letting Justin get too far away. And as we said earlier, I know, Mark, you were saying you want to get up front as fast as you can. But if Dante's this close, there, there's no reason to rush, right? There's no reason to force the issue. He knows he's right there. He's got plenty of time. 57 minutes still on the clock. That is an eternity in this race. Exactly. Well, and, you know, you, you don't know. In, in his mind, he could be thinking, okay, I just want to get close. He could be pushing right now. Like, I, I know that when off-road racing now, they're kind of holding back a little bit. But it's one of those things to where they might not be holding back very much. Like they, they might be putting it all out there on the on the course and 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 going for everything they can because if they don't, they're not gonna be out there. But you know, it looks like Justin might be rising the the occasion a little bit and it, it might not bother him that Dante's back there. He might just kind of be going, ah, I, I got this, no problem. Well, there certainly is no reason to panic because, like I said, with 56 minutes still remaining, there is an eternity left in this race. But right now, Justin doing a great job holding his own. Dante back there, though, putting the heat on him. Third place, we'll have to see who the third place rider is when we get some updated data. But these two really checking out, having a day. We've already encountered some lap traffic. We're going to encounter more. That could be a big factor. Dante could use that to play into his hand. As we roll on, guys, 55 minutes gone here from Prim, Nevada, round number six of the National Grand Prix Series. Uh-oh, getting very close to a move right there. On the off-road section. Oh, we, we're going to have to, we may, we, may have, we may have just had a pass there. We may have seen a lead change. We'll keep you updated. Now it's going to be hard for, for the camera crew to find. Oh, oh, I see blue out in front. Blue's still, blue out, in still front. out there. And it looks like Zach Bell still, for, as far as live timing and scoring, it looks like he's still in second, or he's still in third, sorry. Um, and then Dalton Shirey has moved up. Mateo's right behind Shirey. And we got Austin Walton, Cole Martinez, Tyler Lynn, Ryan Surratt, and Trevor Stewart on the other Purvines Yamaha back by Fast House's rounding out the top 10. But right now it is your three-time champion, your points leader, the man with the red number one, Dante Oliveira, who continues to put the heat on the Yamaha as he gets closer and closer. As we take a look down through the field, the multiple categories competing out well, it looks like today. That's the Pro 2 leader right there. That would be uh, Colton Eck if on the uh, KTM and it looks like JP Alvarez on his KTM might have been right behind him. Yeah, what a step up for him too. I don't know what's going to happen here in the 250 category. We'll keep an eye on that lead battle. Dante Oliveira though, the 23 year old. Oh man, here he comes. They're it looks off. like that margin's getting tighter and tighter. What a battle. Dante out of Hollister, California. Well, and that's going to that's going to be right before that uh, pavement section that we were talking about. So the, the the tricky part about the pavement section is coming on it, you have to kind of monitor the throttle, and then coming down to the end of that, you have to monitor the throttle as well. Let's send it down to the third member of our broadcast team, Nick Garvin. Nick, what do you have for oh. us? Yeah, guy. Yeah, guys. I'm down here in the pits right now. I saw something a little bit odd. Uh, Cole Martinez ran into the pits and he got fueled up super early in the race. I mean, these guys are supposed to be going about five laps. Uh, one other thing I want to touch on is Justin Heft. Heft has won the last two work series races. Those are a little bit longer than the NGP series, but he's really coming on strong and he's really showing his fight with the uh, overall champ of Dante Oliveira. That's a battle that we want to keep our eyes on. Other than that, those two have separated from the pack and Dalton Shirey is really starting to put the pressure on Zach Bell. Anyways, back to you guys in the booth. Thanks a lot, Nick, and thanks to our friends at City like, Service for that. Mark, looks like we got a race change, huh? Yeah, it looks like right as we, we went to Nick, it, it got interesting. Uh, looks like the champ, Dante Oliver, got around Justin Heft on that Purvines Yamaha. And like Nick was saying, these guys are gone. Like, these guys are way out front. So you can't even see them in that, that drone coverage that we did. But, yeah, it looks like uh, the champ has made that move. And... See what he can do. See if see if Justin can stay with him. And uh, you know what Dante's thinking right now is, I'm going to put down the fastest lap 
that I can to try to break this guy. Just totally demoralized. And like I said, so much sports psychology out there involved. But we still got a long way to go. We'll see how Justin responds. And if anybody else coming up through the pack has an answer. And guys, let's not anoint Dante champ just yet. Because like we said, there's some big holes out there. As Joe Pesci famously said in Casino, there's some holes out in those desert areas. And one hole could change everything. One sloppy, silty corner could change everything. But right now, it appears to be exactly what you said, Mark. Dante checking out. Wow, Dante opening up a huge lead. So is this, an, is this an example of Dante was holding back and being patient, or does this accentuate how much Justin was holding Dante up? Uh, I, don't think, I don't think we got either one. I think that basically where it was off camera, so we don't know what happened. Uh, Justin could have made a mistake. Um, I don't, it didn't look like Justin was holding Dante up at all. This could just be Dante making, making the decision of, I need to make the pass now. I want to do this before we get into too many lappers. And just seeing what, what he's got. He, he might have a little bit more in the tank. And it might be something that, you know, he, Justin, maybe he saw a little bit of weakness in there or he saw him making some mistakes and decided now was going to be the time that he's going to make that pass. But I, I think that. Dante is, has that racecraft, and he can make those decisions, especially when you're following somebody. It's a lot easier to make those decisions. But I think we, we, see, we have two guys that are going flat out as fast as they possibly can right now. The defending champion flexing his muscles came in with a 21-point lead over the ill Ryan Surratt. Looks like Ryan Surratt, uh, based on the last data that we got, trying to hang on to a top 10 here. But this probably not going to be the day that he was hoping for as Dante continues to check out. That puts a big smile on his mechanic's face. Bobby Dawson and all the boys from Red Bull KTM, the factory support. It is so cool that they are full-time factory employees out here. And they said that, uh, Bobby told me earlier, he said everybody at that new Temecula facility, that $53 million Mecca that is beautiful. They said they love Dante, always asking about him. They said they pay close attention to what happens out here in this series. Yeah, and, and that's the cool part about KTM Gas Gas and Husky. They're all kind of based out of the same area, um, made in the same area. And it, it's one of those things, it is a team effort. It's definitely something, there's lots of mechanics that are out here doing multiple riders and, and it's it's nice. It's The funny thing is we got to go tour that facility and they're already running out of room. And it, it's kind of amazing that they, they own a block, more than a block of Temecula. So it looks like that's the Pro 2 challenge right now. It's Colton Eck out front on his KTM and then JP Alvarez in second on his KTM. JP has really stepped it up this year, um, moving to that uh, RPM KTM team. And that's where the the Oliveira brothers came from is that RPM KTM team. I think the Kill Martin uh, team that is that Eck is on is is definitely doing a great job with a lot of riders out there. Um, but that that RPM KTM team has a, a good kind of pedigree going on there. Yes, JP Alvarez hoping to go back to back. He was our winner at 29 Palms as Jack Simpson and KILO followed him closely. But there is the number one of your leader, your three-time series champion, the Red Bull KTM of Dante Oliveira. Oh, looking, oh, looking strong, got a little offline though. But to what I was saying earlier, it only takes one mistake. Exactly. To change everything. You cannot rest on your laurels, and that is what is so great about this sport. There is no running out the clock. There is no resting. Doesn't matter how big your lead is, anything can happen and it's all on you it's all on you there you can't blame anybody else unless there's some kind of bike bike issue or or whatever but so just think about this those guys haven't even gotten gas yet like they haven't stopped to get gas they haven't there's a lot of stuff that can happen in in the pits and a lot of stuff that can that can go wrong a lot of stuff that Ooh. can go right so yeah he's he's slipping and sliding so he might have done that to uh he might have done that to kind of get a little bit of a gap so that he can come into the pit. And again, Dante Oliveira continues to lead him around. We'll see if Justin can hang. 
And there is Dante through. We'll get some fresh data on him, but boy, he looks fast. Boy, the three-time champion showing us a lesson. This is a guy who grew up racing woods, was used to very tight conditions, and that skill set has translated very, very nicely to the National Grand Prix Championship Series. I'd love to see how Dante would do on the Supercross circuit or the outdoor motocross circuit. I think he could hang with some of those guys. Yeah, I think that the outdoor motocross circuit would be a little bit easier transition for him. I know we saw a lot of the off-road riders come from motocross, and then we've seen some of them go back to motocross. Um, and so it's definitely, it's definitely an easy transition for them. So, uh, and it looks like in the, we're getting word that in the Pro 2 class, it looks like JP Alvarez might have made that pass on Colton Ake. Uh, we have our, our spotters out there, they're helping us out. So, uh, and then it looks like there's an SLR Honda in third and, and uh, Jack Simpson on that Pervine's Yamaha in fourth and Rounding out the top five will be Cole Zeller on that uh, Gain Slinger Kawasaki. So a, a wide variety of bikes in the top five of both classes. Yeah, we're hearing Dalton Shiree oh. on the move as well, too. Great racing. We're taking a look at right now. That's the Pro 2 battle that we were just talking about. Looks like Eck got him back. So, And that is what is so cool with a race of this length, a race of this magnitude. That you know, you know, one one pass is not going to break a lot of these racers. And there's it, what's so interesting is because this is such a diverse course with the supercross type infield and the wide open section and the pavement section, you're seeing strengths and weaknesses come into play where one rider might be significantly faster in one spot and know that that's where he can make his move. And I think that's what we're seeing right now with Ekin Alvarez going back and forth, trading lead. Wouldn't it be exciting if we go the whole way through this? like this 45 minutes left to go yeah and that that's definitely so they might be like we were saying before they might be pushing it because they know that they're going to pit right now so they want to give their their guys a little bit to pit and it looks like both of those guys going back out uh oh oh be careful that's, out there it looks like a supermoto race huh? that's the pavement that's what you got to worry about <laughs> and once you start sliding on the pavement it doesn't stop. It's just like your car. Once you start into a skid, there, there is an analog brakes on these things. So That's right. Recovering is, is a little bit tougher than, than it is on in your car. But those two riders going at it, and you know, it looks like they've kind of pulled away from the rest of the Pro 2 class. That's Colton Ake right there on that, that KTM. Yeah, and here's what's going to happen, too, with that pavement section. The more motorcycles we send through there, the more dust and sand we bring to that area, the slipperier that may get. And it may catch a few riders by surprise when they go to hit the, the front and rear brake on those sections. It is, and that's a great shot on our, our drone footage. We could see the two leaders in the Pro 2 class going at it, going down. They're, they are flat out as fast as those bikes will go right now going down that section. And that's, that section is sketchy because it's not only is it hard, but they've watered it, so it's, it's, it's really slick. But looks like Colton maybe, maybe got passed by JP and maybe it lit a fire under him, so you never know. It, it's the little things that, that will make a difference. About 45 minutes gone. We are about halfway here from Prim, Nevada, as Dante Oliveira leads our unlimited category. Colton Eck leads them around in the Pro 2 category. I believe Michaela's still out front in the women's division. As we approach the halfway mark, we will see if things stay the same. As we get a look high above beautiful Prim, Taz Insurance Services, thank you so much for being a part of this. We have witnessed some excellent racing and there is lots more to come. Pit stops will be forthcoming. Can the leaders continue to hold that pace? All these questions and more will be answered when we return. Stay with us guys. Round number six of the National Grand Prix Series will be back right after this. Well, Joe Martin here with Joe Martin Racing. Great new adventure here with Reason this year. I'm excited to uh, partner up with them. It's going to be an exciting new year. We have some great riders this year. Stop by. I'd love for you guys to check out the new Reason sunglasses. We're really looking forward to the adventure with them.
appropriate commercial to bring us back to the Rad Custom Graphics. Buffalo Bills Grand Prix here from Prim, Nevada. It is round number six of the National Grand Prix Championship Series. Jack Rapella, Mark Tilly with you. And I'll tell you what, if you're a KTM fan out there, stand up, cheer, throw a party. I know they're throwing a party down in Temecula because right now KTM is in prime position for this race, leading in the 450 category, Dante Oliveira. Leading in the 250 category, is it still Mr. Eck out there or... JP Alvarez, they've been going back and forth, both on KTMs and leading the women's division also on a KTM, Michaela Nielsen. KTM, so far today, really things going, going their way. Yeah, they're definitely, they're definitely got to be happy about stuff. Oh, and it looks like... Oh, whoa, we got a major up there. We're hearing Dante, Dante pushing his bike. Did so, I hope I did not give him the announcer's jinx. I'm, I'm praising KTM, and there could be a problem. We'll have to get eyes on it with Dante Oliveira, your three-time champion. We hear he's pushing his bike. He had a very comfortable lead. Let's send it down to the third member of our broadcast team, Nick Garvin. Good. Hey, guys. We're sitting down here in the pits. Uh, unfortunately for the SLR Honda guys, the 259 of Talon LaFontaine is out of the race due to he has some visual problems out there. Uh, it's an unfortunate hit to the series, especially with him. He's capable of winning and he's capable of being in the top five. Super bu bum for him, but it happens. It's dirt bike racing, anything can happen. So anyways, back to you in the booth, Jack. Thank well, thank you, Nick, and look at this breaking news, ladies and gentlemen. I told you anything can happen out here. Expect the unexpected. Your three-time champion is pushing his motorcycle. Mark, what in the world is going on? Yeah, this is Good. this is heartbreaking. This is definitely, but true champion. He's pushing it back, trying to get it to the pits to see what he can, oh, what no. the team can do to get him back out there. It's usually when they're pushing the bike like that. It looks like those tires, those those mooses haven't gone away. That could be some kind of motor issue. Um, could be, we can't see the other side of the, the bike, could be broken chain. Yeah, I'm curious could if the be chain all still on it. That would be something that I would think could be an obvious answer. We'll try to get closer eyes to see. Uh, does it look like there's a chain st still on that motorcycle? Cannot tell. Yeah, it looks like it. It looks like there's still a chain oh. on there. So this could be something that got, went done, done internally in the engine. It could be a thing. Maybe gas. Uh, we are past the 45 minute mark. Oh, oh we have them carrying a gas can this is down there. And I know that they can't do anything. He can't get assistance from anybody other than other riders when they're on the track, I believe. And when it comes to the getting assistance, I don't think they can offer him assistance outside of that pit area. That's why his mechanic will be waiting for him right there. And as soon as he pushes that bike in, I know. So, so now, we now we gotta out. wonder. We, to we, we gotta, we gotta look at that and wonder, is so his mechanic is right over that little rise from him. Um, now we gotta wonder with Heft out front, does he have enough gas? Is he gonna be able to make it? We haven't seen them come through live timing and scoring. Oh, there's Justin and he's in the motocross section, so he had to see going by. If this is a gas issue, um, oh my God. he had to see Dante when he went by him. Hey. So now Heft, both that early them, charge that he did, did to stay in Dalton. front, might come back to yeah. benefit him. Well, let's let's stay hey, with guys, this, guys. They're going to try to get ready. Dante a drink of fuel. Here he okay. comes down. You guys, Nick we got some got major shakeup going on right now. Dante and Dalton Shirey. This is huge for the points, you guys. They got they have to go back on the racetrack where they came off. Who knows how many positions they're gonna lose right now? And I thanks, Nick. Thank you very much, Nick. Well, oh, that was it. All it needed was fuel. So just like NASCAR, those fuel calculations are so important. And there is there's no gas gauge on these motorcycles. No, is there? there's there's definitely no gas gauge, and he has to go back out to where he started pushing his bike off the course so really? that's why we didn't see him just jump back on the course he has to go back out to the exact spot that he left the course to go back on if not there's some issues um i believe nick in that thing said something about dalton shirey because dalton was running in in third he had moved into third um and it, we're still showing dante out front on our live timing and scoring um, but it's definitely one of those things to where Dalton and Dante are on 
essentially the same motorcycle. So if one ran out of gas, the other one's probably going to have run out of gas. Wow, so you wonder, how does this happen? These crew chiefs have this so doubt. Is this, did this course throw them some curveballs? Yes, Dalton Shiree has pulled off. This is going to throw a monkey wrench into our race. Guys, there's a reason we don't run these on paper. We run them on this course. Wow, how does this happen? How does this happen with these crew chiefs? They just pushed it a little bit too far and got a little greedy out there? Yeah, I mean, Monitoring the gas, there, there's all kinds of factors that can come into it. I, it doesn't look like any of these guys have fallen, so it does, there couldn't be any gas leaking out that way. Right now we're looking at Zach Bell come in and, and get, get some hydration, get some water. That's Robbie Bell and uh, Zach's crew kind of getting everything together. But Oh, and that's Austin Walton. Austin Walton was out of gas. So wow. the, the KTM team and the Husky team have completely drop the ball when it comes to gas monitoring and what they're going to do so maybe in this heat and in this in this these sand sections the bikes are taking up more gas than what they what they thought but that's three riders so far that we oh another Mateo one Mateo out of gas as well so it's definitely one of those things to where they uh they definitely had some issues when it comes to this so miscalculations across the board so and that that changes everything Cole Martinez that was running about fifth overall has now on his SLR Honda he is now in second Zach Bell is back into third on the po podium Austin Walton's in fourth and it looks like Austin was the one that uh, had the best the best uh, case scenario when it came to that he was running out of gas right in and then we got, so it looks like Nick's got something for us in the pits again. Right, well, you guys, there's a major shakeup going on down here in the pits. It's like chaos with the KTM and Husky group. All the KTMs and the Huskies all ran out of fuel, shaking up the top five. I can't even tell you who's in the top five now because everyone was walking their bike back. It's crazy. The 250F guys barely are making it into the pits. It looks like pit strategy is not working out for the KTM group today. Thank you very much, Nick. We appreciate it. Brought to you by City Service. It is the Out of Gas Nationals. What, what an intriguing development. And I'll tell you, for all those crew chiefs and mechanics down there, everybody's probably going to get pulled off at this point. If you're looking at what happened to Team KTM, if you think you're good on fuel, you're probably not good on fuel. You're telling your rider, come off, let's err on the side of caution and get you filled up. Well, and that's the bad part about this is that it's, you don't know until it's too late. Like, those guys are out there. They're sending them for an extra lap. And you can't find, you, you, you're going to see those guys pushing their bikes back in. It looks like Mateo was in the motocross section when he ran out of gas. But you see those guys up front. So it looks like that's J.P. Alvarez. And when it comes to the Pro 2 class, I believe that Colton Eck on a KTM is still up front with J.P. Alvarez second, Jack Simpson third. And then you got Kai in fourth. And uh, it looks like Walker's rounding out the top five in that class. And this is so. rare because typically these mechanics are right on top of this. And Dante had such a lead, they could have brought him in to give him a splash. The fact that they kept him out there, there's something about this course that is really, really throwing off the math and the equation for what they had for pit stops. I don't know if it's maybe more wide open than they thought, if the heat is playing a factor. I don't know, but something has trained, changed drastically from what they planned on. Well, then we got Dante back on the track. So he's coming into the motocross section now. So he he must have been halfway through the off-road section when he might have been by the pavement when, when he ran out of gas. So, But he went back out to where he was supposed to and then now coming back in it again and and going to be going into the pits but yeah there's there's a lot of factors that can do maybe they didn't know that the the riders were gonna go as hard as early it could be wheel spin every once in a while it could be all kinds of different things the the sand weighing the bike down all kinds of stuff now what you gotta what the riders got to remember is that the bikes are a lot heavier now now they're full of gas whereas before they weren't, they didn't have any gas in them. So now they're full of gas. Bikes react different when there's a full tank of gas. And I can tell you this, what's, what's odd is the last two rounds that we have sat here and called, I don't recall a ton of pit stops happening until we were less than 30 minutes left in the race. Uh, they've been out there less than an hour and already ran out of fuel. And I'm talking about it being such a wide open course. Well, it doesn't get much more wide open than 29 Palms. 
So I, I don't know. I don't know. It, is it the heat? Could the heat play a factor here? I don't I, know. Yeah, I, I have I have no clue. Maybe on and off the gas as much as they are, maybe plays a little bit of a factor. But yeah, I mean, for, for something like that to happen, the, these, these teams are going off of years of data and years of of research and development on these motorcycles. These teams know these bikes in and out, and it's a collective decision that's made between the team. And you know what? There's there's definitely some miscalculations going on with that. I know that uh, Anthony De Basilio and uh, Timmy Wiegand, Anthony, part of the Rockstar ha or Rockstar Husqvarna team, and Timmy, both both accomplished guys. You know, that just miscalculations, and it happens. It happens yeah. all the time. Everybody makes mistakes, and that's what looks like that's Surratt. You can tell he's he's not feeling it. He's definitely not looking as, as spry as he normally is and uh, throwing the bike around. So hopefully he can get through this with, with some points and go from there. But it, it's great for the fans. It's definitely you got Justin Heff out front. you got Cole Martinez in second. Zach Bell in third, and then Austin Walton in fourth. Tyler Lynn rounding out the top five on his Precision Concepts Kawasaki, but there's diversity in the top five, that's for sure. There sure is, and Ryan Surratt, he may not be feeling it, but if he can sense anything that's going on around him, the opportunity he has to score valuable points, coming in number two, 21 points back at Dante Oliveira, if he can continue to apply pressure and stay out in front, he's got an opportunity to close the championship gap here in round number six. It, it is so interesting to me too that only select teams ran out of gas. The, everybody's dealing with about the same sized over, oversized tank, right? Uh, in general, yeah. I know that if we're dealing with stock tanks, like the Yamaha has a little bit bigger tank than, than other ones. And there could be, you know, these could be brand new tanks and maybe not expanded as much or something along those lines, it's, there, there could be a little bit in there. You, you never know, there's so many factors that, that go into it that you just have no clue. But you know that team's gonna go back and figure this out. Yeah, they certainly will. I mean, that's a head scratcher for them. Like I said, they just would not take an unnecessary risk, especially with your guy that far out in front. This really must have caught them by surprise. The blessing for them though, is that Dante wasn't six miles from the pit five miles from the pit when this happened, close enough to push it in and close enough to salvage the day. As we continue on, guys, we are less than 30 minutes remaining in round number six, a race that has been turned upside down. And this is why it's not just announcer cliches when I say, hey, this race isn't over despite how far anybody is out front. That just proved my point. You never know what's gonna happen out there. A fuel issue has turned this one upside down. Yeah, and it, it's definitely the last thing that we would have thought about. We would have thought about bikes breaking and, and a bike breaking every once in a while or whatever, but fuel. Like to, to 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 come down to this, it's kind of kind of an, an interesting thing. There's the women's pro leader, uh, Michaela Nielsen, out front on her KTM and and making it look easy. She's making it look easy. Coming yeah. into the the moto section and she's got a, a nice comfortable lead out there. So yeah, it, it's definitely there's so many things that can happen and so many things that can happen in a blink of an eye, and it's happened. This is something that we haven't seen. And Michaela, we're, we're getting word that she's 15 years old. Wow. So. A young lady that has a bright future, that's for sure. Was able to speak with her over the last few rounds. She's in incredible shape. A lot of talent out there. And we said, if there's any young ladies watching us, come on out. Give this sport a try. All different levels of competition. As there's the 22, the Kawasaki. That was, that was Trevor Hunter. Trevor uh, Hunter. Our, our resident pro rider kind of coming through right in front of Michaela. So he's probably happy that she had to stop to get gas. So that yeah, <laughs> there she comes. That's for sure. Like I said, all these mechanics pulling everybody in. I don't know if it was just an issue with select teams, but uh, definitely you want to pull your rider in right now, especially from Michaela's standpoint with the lead that she has. No reason to risk it. Get her full, right? Yeah, well, and with that IMS quick dump system and, and quick fill system, they're in and out with within seconds so it, it doesn't take very long to stop and make it happen and and just be safe so we definitely it looks like a lot of the the chaos that was going on down in those pro pits has has gone away and and uh riders just coming in for normal scheduled pit stops now so you know it's definitely definitely interesting to see these 
things come about and you know it, it like like you said it, it's some stuff that happens and you don't think about it and then now like i said these teams will come back next time and this won't happen again yeah and that's why there's more to this story too talking about what you just said about not taking a risk i know bobby dawson wouldn't take an unnecessary risk if he thought dante was that close especially with the lead something unforeseen happened we'll probably get the story after the race i'm sure all the gurus at ktm will figure it out <laughs> but wow a wild one there guys this one could really change the complexion of the championship chase as well. I hope you guys are enjoying every single minute of this watching on the Dirt Bike Mag YouTube channel. We're about 20 minutes left in this race and I do believe our yeah. leader, yeah. Justin Heff, out of Pervine Racing Yamaha coming around. He's got a full tank of fuel and he's looking to close this one out. Everything we talked about earlier about the, the psychology, the pace, and then you plan for something like this. Heft, in his mind, probably thought, ah, there's there's no chance I'm, I'm catching Dante today. But you just hang in there. You never give up. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah, you never give up until you cross that finish line. And so this is a back marker that's coming in to get, get some fuel. But you could see that. But those IMS quick dumps, like that's, uh, that's how fast. And he's done and back out there. It almost doesn't give the, the rider any kind of any kind of reprieve to, to catch his breath or anything like that. He's, he's got enough to get something to drink and maybe something to eat, and and uh, he's back out there. So I wonder if it could be something as crazy. Hey, I'm no chemist, but maybe, you know, a different batch of race fuel that, that burned up quicker or something like that. Who knows? Just something, something very, very unexpected and unforeseen is what went down today as the 34 cruises right around as we continue on here. And that was Cole Martinez coming through in, in second. Oh, and that keep an eye on him because he was a gentleman who came in 41 points back. He's got an opportunity to pick up some points. This is, this is a Christmas present for the rest of the field who was hoping to close in on Dante because about 20 minutes ago, it looked like Dante was just going to check out and continue to build that lead. And that's huge in the point oh, series. The battle is still on. These guys have been this way for the last... 30 minutes the 250 category how are they doing on fuel that's my question and here comes a man who once led this race zach bell toughing it out and that's zach bell trying to tell a lap rider hey I'm, I'm behind you before we go to scoring can you move over so i can get past you so it's definitely we should see the pro two leaders it looked like they were in the there they are right there so those guys have been going at it for the last 45 minutes just like this. So that's JP Alvarez and, and Colton Ake. Colton Ake, uh, look, at one point in time, JP got around him and then uh, Colton got back by him and looks like he's been able to, to hold him off and, and uh, keep the lead in that Pro 2 class. Surely those two have been in for fuel already, right? I don't think we caught it, but I mean, is there, they're running 250s, not burning quite as much fuel. They've had to have come in though, yeah, right? Yeah, I would, I would think so. I don't, I don't think they can go that long on it. Um, if not, they would be coming in right now. Um, we'll find out here in a second. What a battle, though, all day long between Eck and Alvarez in the 250 category. Yeah, they, they had to have gotten fuel because they wouldn't be pushing it that hard. So Not a 10 so minutes left. Yeah, this is great racing right here in the, in the Pro 2 class. It'd be interesting to see if we could see the third place on camera. That's uh, Tyler Lynn. He's in the the premier class. So they've they've already caught up to Tyler Lynn is running fifth in the premier class. The Pro Twos have caught that line up to fifth place. So Austin Walton would be the next person. Um, I don't know how far out there Austin Walton is, but. 22 minutes remain our one two three we've got heft martinez bell and how about bell you know we that's what we were saying could he salvage the day maybe dealing with that injury nagged them after leading this race for a little bit but he has kept his kept his nose to the grindstone and he has worked his way back up to a podium finish we'll see if he can hang on to it yeah it's pretty amazing we we wouldn't have thought this would be the top three no, not Ten at all. Ten minutes ago. Not at all. Ten minutes ago, and, it was completely different. And, and let's not take anything for granted with what we've learned. Is there there's still anything <laughs> exactly. can happen? Another fuel issue, who knows? Probably not that, but anybody could go down 
and uh, just amazing. A lot of intrigue out there, but I, I still can't get over it. We'll see how far Dante comes up. He's just got to be sick to his stomach right now, knowing that he had the speed, was pulling away. Nobody was going to do anything about it except the motorcycle. Exactly, exactly. And we'll, we'll see how much he has how much he has in the tank after pushing that bike back. You can't discredit that. He pushed that bike all the way back from wherever he was at on the course. So, I mean, and even with that, it's still, it looks like in Lifetime and Storm, he's, he's still in the top 10. That's not what he's going to want, but he's in the top 10 still. Um, but Justin Heff pushing, dropping back a little bit when, when he did get passed by, by Dante, but still keeping his frame of mind and, and not giving up and, and still going after it. Cole Martinez, who couldn't see the front runners, and then now all of a sudden he is one of the front runners. Zach Bell, can he end up on the podium again? Maybe. Like, it's definitely one of those things to where he, he might not be completely back yet, but he's, he's definitely working in the right direction. A hydration break for a few of these racers coming in, getting a quick dousing with the water bottle. Getting one in, that shows you just how hot and how taxing this is. We're under 20 and minutes to go here. Dante. Dante Oliveira, they're cheering him on. Come on. And, and still, you know, for Dante, the day is not finished. Valuable points are what is at stake. He doesn't want to fall too far back. He doesn't want to give up too much of the lead that he built the first half of the series. Yeah, and then you saw you saw Dalton Shirey, the the National Heron Hound champion right there that we were talking about earlier, this being a desert race and him having a a chance at maybe being up front um, coming out. I don't know if he experienced the same thing that the rest of the team did, but it's all the same people pitting him and, and it's all the same gas. So he might have he might have pulled off due to the same same problem um, of not having any any go juice in that Husqvarna. So um, you you never know, but definitely changing up everything right now i'm sure the ktm people not too happy with me we come back from that break i say ktm have a party running away with this thing and then we can't even believe it we hear that dante's pushing his bike so right now hopefully i don't jinx the blue crew but the blue crew out in front yamaha now having a day justin heff trying to really really step up he has been fast all day long this was the break that he was waiting for he put himself in a position to win, he is trying to finish and capitalize. He's got about 18 minutes left to go to make that dream a reality. Well, and it, we, we're getting getting word from, we, we don't have them on, on film right now, but uh, getting word that Austin Walton is starting to put the, the screws to Zach Bell. So um, the one of the, the riders that fared a little bit better in that, uh, that gas situation was Austin Walton on the Rockstar Husky. Um, and was in the pits actually when when he needed to get that gas so um, definitely him being back up and challenging for a podium position is a testament to the the work put in put in by him and his team all right so the unofficial running order you're taking a look at left side of your screen Justin Heff, Cole Martinez, Zach Bell, Austin Walton, Tyler Lynn, Trevor Stewart, uh, Redondi Campbell, Mateo Oliveira actually ahead of his brother Dante, young brother ahead of him. So Dante holding on to a top 10, we believe. I mean, the quick math in my head, let's say Cole Martinez is able to hold this podium position in second and would be able to pick up eight spots on Dante for a man who came in 41 points down. That could be a huge, huge surge in the point series. Yeah, exactly. It could make it, make it interesting headed into the second part of the season and even the last couple of the the first part of the season so definitely uh i can't wait to get get back to that pro two championship that that's going on right now and that that battle that was going on between uh colton egg and jp alvarez that that is definitely going to be nice to watch they've they've been battling that long and we need to we need to get back to that bad boy and look at look and see what's going on there. Well, I'd be remiss too. One one gentleman I do not see him in the top ten is did something happen to Ryan Surratt? That's also going to have a major impact on our championship chase. He came in only 21 points back, and he we're going to have to keep a close watch. He may be out of this race. I'm not so sure if he's still out there. According to our unofficial data, I don't even see him in the top ten. That's rough. Because that's a guy who certainly, if he was healthy, had speed to win this thing. And you know that, man, that's got to that's be disappointing for that team 
knowing that they had Dante on the ropes here. They, they could have, if, if Surratt was healthy and performed the way he wanted to, he could have potentially left here with the points lead if things stay the way they do. Exactly, and, and you got to be out there to you got to be out there, and you got to finish to win. And it happens; people get sick, and you can't do anything about it. So, you know, trying to like you were saying earlier, the championships are won on your worst days. But look at Dante; he's not done yet. He's not done picking up positions. He's gonna try to keep creeping up. He's still got 15 minutes to do so. Wonder how how far up he can get. He's got his brother in front of him. Mateo, who, what, from what we hear, Mateo figuring to be another strong competitor and championship contender in years to come. Those two mix it up in practice weekly. And Dante has told us that his brother is really, really fast, put some heat on him. So we look for him to continue to mature and develop and be another one of the major championship contenders. And but there's, there's the 27 right there, your leader, the Yamaha of Justin Heff. Leading this field around with 15 minutes remaining here from Prim, Nevada, round number six of the AMA National Grand Prix Series. Is it the day of the Yamaha? We're 15 minutes away from finding out. Yeah, and look how rough that course is right now. It's These guys just want this thing to be over with. And we're a couple laps from, from the end, but, you know, coming through some of the, those that chop, looks like he, he got a little bit of head shake, but... He's looking pretty good. I mean, he's he looking pretty comfortable out front on that, that Purvines Yamaha. They got that thing dialed. Um, now we're, we're waiting to see coming across, should be Cole Martinez is, would be the next person that we see. Um, that's the women's pro leader. Um, and it looks like she's going through the section that, that, they just, uh, that we just saw Heft go through. So they might be lapping coming up on, on her. Um, so the next rider that we will see will be Cole Martinez on that SLR Honda, and that might be him right there. Fuel was the big variable 15 minutes ago. I'll tell you what will be the variable for the last 15 minutes, and that is vision. You talked about how rough this course is getting. This is also the worst vision these racers will see all day coming up on lap traffic. Also, forget what the watering truck did. That's just a distant memory now that we are, are more than 70 minutes into this race. It is dusty and dry on this hot day in Las Vegas. Hard to see out there. And I know our, our friends from Flow Vision and all the goggle companies out here doing a great job. But there's only so much you can do. I mean, there's only so many tear-offs you can pull if it's dusty in front of you you're not going to be able to go fast exactly well and that is cole martinez right there um we we are seeing him start to go into the the pits now and then uh we got a little glimpse of zach bell going by so not sure if uh if zach bell has been passed by austin walton or if he pulled that gap back out on austin walton so uh, i didn't see austin go by but that's uh, oh, and there's Cole Martinez coming out of the pits. So he is running second on that SLR Honda right now. Wow. Wow. What, a, what an opportunity for him. He can sense it. The 3-4 trying to pick up some valuable points. Can't wait to see what it's going to look like, what this championship chase is going to look like after we get done with this round. But we still got 12 minutes left to go. If we've learned anything, do not set this order until we see a checkered flag fly and that, and that gives you a little perspective uh we just went from cole and that who you're seeing in the bottom right hand of your screen that's tyler that's the uh or that's sorry that's justin who is the the leader oh and we got now we're back to the pro two battle and it looks like that's colton egg out front i don't see jp out oh it looked like that jp alvarez was coming into the screen behind there so it looks like we still got the same two top two guys battling. Um, they have pretty much left everybody behind in the Pro 2 division. So yeah, that was JP Alvarez. And I don't see third. That might be third coming through. That might be that might be Simpson. So we, we do. The top three in the Pro 2 class are all within striking distance of each other. Yeah, still a lot to sort out there as well. Jack Simpson, one of those racers who seems to get stronger as the race goes on. He's used to these conditions. 
from Australia. Very similar to what he runs over there. Again, big shout out to his father watching us many, many miles away in Australia. Let us know where you're watching from in the comments too. We appreciate reading that. Appreciate all the great support. Appreciate you guys watching here on the Dirt Bike Magazine YouTube channel. Round number six, live stream to you on your device. People here in person even watching on their devices. How great is that? You're standing out there track side and then you also got your phone out. You get the best of both worlds. So that, and you need it today to keep up with all this calamity. So that's Colt Nate going through on the Three Brothers Hatch Racing KTM. Uh, and then JP Alvarez right on his tail on the RPM KTM. And then behind that we should see Jack Simpson on the Pervine's Yamaha. And then, and then uh, fourth should be Walker on that SLR Honda. So definitely Pro 2 class is is still being decided here in the, the, the waning laps. It looks like Heft might have the premier class under control. He's got a little bit of a lead on Cole Martinez. And what, what we want to see is where's Zach Bell? Is Zach still in third or did he succumb to the pressure from Austin Walton? Yeah, tight championship chase in the 250 category as well. Valuable points are on the line. Jack Simpson knows that well. He finished runner-up last year to Mateo Oliveira. Jack Simpson wants that championship badly. Mateo stepped up to the 450s. But right now, Team KTM still looks strong in that category with both Eck and JP Alvarez as we continue to close in on a finish. These riders now... You're fatigued, you're tired, you're cramped, it's rough, it's dusty out there. How do you how do you continue to push the pace at this point in the race? Yeah, this is just you have to want to suffer a little bit. <laughs> like, this is <laughs> the difference between off-road and motocross is right now. Like this is you have to want it more than anybody else. And they're suffering right now. If any of these guys come in right now and say they're having fun, there is no way that they're they're being truthful with you. These guys are suffering. This is the very end of it. It's it's definitely something to where they got 12 minutes left or 13 minutes left, and this is this is where it separates the men from the boys. It, it's one of those things to where it's a cliche for a reason. Eck Alvarez Simpson in the 250 category. That is your top three, but absolutely well said. We'll see who's got the pers perseverance, the tenacity. We talk so much about the fitness that it takes to compete in motocross. 30 plus one, 30 plus two. Keep, these riders are coming up on 80 minutes out there going as fast as they possibly can. Sometimes maxed out, top gear, truly amazing, truly astounding. Exactly. I mean, it's it's stopping for gas stopping for gas a little bit of water and maybe some kind of gel food or something like that but these guys are all in if they can make it to the end of this race it doesn't matter who you are you're in some kind of condition you're in better condition than i would say half of america i agree and how about the riders like dante and dalton that had to push their motors like if you've ever pushed a dirt bike especially when you're tired you know that's not the easiest thing in the world and that can really drain you yeah no even when you just fall over all of that draining of your body and all that stuff to get going after you fall over, that's hard. I couldn't imagine pushing a motorcycle and especially pushing a motorcycle as long as Dante was pushing that bike for a while. Like Austin Walton kind of got the best of that deal and he didn't have to push that bike as long. Even Mateo, he was in the, the motocross section when it happened. So, but Dante was pushing down the road, so it's, you, you never know how far away he was, and it sounds like uh, Dalton Shirey might have had to do the same thing. So it was great. We had Nick down there in the, the pits telling us what was going on and, and how it was happening and, and going from there. So it is Eck, Alvarez, Simpson, your top three in the 250 category, Tinkler, Walkler, and Ayeo. Followed closely, that's the top five. Still a lot to sort out with 10 minutes roughly remaining here in round number six of the NGPC series. We'll continue to keep an eye on our Yamaha leader, the 27 of Justin Heft. And look at that course, look, wow, <laughs> look how beat up it is. And look at all the different lines. All that, this rider clearly choosing choosing different lines than what the faster guys are, but. Look at that, there's insides and outsides and all kinds of stuff. 
Oh, I guess this writer is Andrew Schultz, is who we're, uh, who we're watching right now. And uh, so he must know the cameras on him because he picked it up a little bit. Yes, he did. <laughs> hey, whatever, whatever it takes. He heard us sure. talking. That is for sure. As you see some of our great sponsors on there, too, we really want to thank them for stepping up here. Rad Custom Graphics. Guys, if you need a new set of graphics, make sure you call up Rad. Make sure you just call them and say, hey, thank you for backing this live coverage. We love it. Taz Insurance with the drone cam here today. Thanks so much. City Service bringing us those Nick Garvin updates. And 1-800-DENT-DOC. Don't forget, if you get a ding, give them a ring. And I imagine the phone number is easy to remember, too, right? 1-800-DENT-DOC. <laughs> Some of these kids today may not even know, though, that uh, letters that you represent can, you can call numbers. somebody. Yeah, right. Or you can call somebody. Yeah, and it's a great thing with all these great sponsors that we have. Like we always say, take a look at the people that are supporting what you're doing. Like these, all these great sponsors come on board to support this, not only this live feed, but to support this series. And it's definitely something you want to make sure when when you're spending your money, you support those people that are supporting you because. If you don't, they're not going to be around for very much longer. So they're, they're doing this for a reason. They, they got to sell product or they got to sell a service or they got to sell something to be able to have the money to support what you want to do. Why not support them? Support those who support your sport. That is what it is all about, ladies and gentlemen. So we certainly appreciate that. As we are less than 10 minutes to go, it has been a hot, brutal, rough, and tough day here in Prim, Nevada, right outside of Buffalo Bills. Who's got the ability to close it out? Will it be the Yamaha of Justin Heff, who comes home on top of the box? Right now, he is in prime position, trying to keep it going. Uh, we'll keep an eye on Dante, too. Was Dante Oliveira able to pick up any more spots? I think he was up to ninth last running, and that is very, very valuable because, remember, he's trying to hang on to the points lead. 41 points was the margin coming in between Dante and Colt Martinez. J.P. Alvarez, Colton Eck, and Jack Simpson, your 1-2-3 in the Pro 250 category as we take you high above on the Taz Insurance drone cam here to take a good look at the pit area. We've got still battles all over this track. Battles for position. We focused in on the leaders, but there's a lot of battles for position all over in all different categories. Yeah, the Pro 2 the Pro two class is on fire with J.P. Alvarez, Colton Eck, and even Jack Simpson coming into it. It's showing us in live timing and scoring that J.P. is up front, but I think that's just because the there's so many changes going on right now. So uh, last time we saw them on camera, it was Colton up front. Um, and JP was charging from behind, but we'll see. I mean, they're all close enough to where we, we've seen lots of stuff happen. This could be another one of those things to where the Pro 2 class could be just completely shuffled by somebody going down or somebody making a mistake. So it's definitely one of those things to where we're liking the action and we like that the Pro 2s are this close. Now we just got to see what's going to happen at the end. I saw a watering truck took a opportunity to try to get that main straightaway watered down. I know these riders will appreciate that greatly as right now vision is just so hard to come by. We just saw a rider throwing off his, uh, his hydration system. He must have gone through that and it looked like a fairly decent sized hydration system. So must have gone through that. And Let's that shows you how tired he must be. Get rid of that extra weight, right? And here comes your leader. You're getting a look at him. The 27 of Justin Heff. Will this be the last time by? Will this be the white flag situation for him? Our and clock, it looks like it. Our, that's where our clock is shown. White flag waves, ladies and gentlemen. One more lap to go. Yamaha fans, where you at? Make some noise. Will it be the day of the Blue Crew? Will Yamaha break up what has been a dominant run for KTM here as of late. Well, and that was, you saw him getting a pit board as he come through. That was team manager Justin Seeds, uh, who is an accomplished racer himself, but letting him know that, hey, you got one more lap and looks like you got this one in the book. So the only, the only thing that's better than that, the only thing that's better than getting that and that white flag is getting the checker flag and getting there first. Yeah, I don't know if we can say anything's in the books based on what we saw today. I, I'm actually surprised they didn't give him a splash of fuel there just for good measure. <laughs> Hopefully the, the, the fuel gods are, are smiling down still. I can't wait after this race till we get the inside story of what happened. Team KTM, Team Husqvarna, but right now that Yamaha continues to fly. And, and you gotta feel 
So great for Justin. The way this race started, remember Zach Bell got out in front, he had the lead. Justin was able to chase him down and make the pass. And then for about a lap, we watched Dante follow Justin closely. Justin was able to hold that pressure, but eventually Dante got by, checked out. Justin just did not give up. He didn't give up, he didn't throw in the surrender flag by any means. He just continued pushing and that all paid off when Dante ran out of gas. Yeah, and we got a, I got a little bit of a connection to Justin. He's been in Dirt Bike Magazine before with, with, his, uh, with his brother and his dad, but it, it's one of those things to where his dad, Darren, I know is out here, but his dad, Darren, back in the early 2000s, late 90s, early 2000s, was a test rider for us and was on the cover of multiple magazines doing all kinds of stuff. So shout out to Darren out there sh keeping his kids in the sport that he stayed in and he was accomplished racer as well. So definitely one of those fun things to where it all comes full circle. And that looks like Cole Martinez in, he's still in second um, in the pro division. So there goes Michaela by for what she will be getting the white flag to, to top her class hopefully in one more lap. Yeah, another near flawless day for her in the pro women division. Big congratulations, Michaela. Followed by, we haven't seen a whole lot of Ava today. Ava Silvestri, who's running in the second spot. Caitlin Jacobs rounding out your top three. We're getting a look now at your top ten. According to this, Dante continuing to salvage points up to eighth. And that's the important number. You know, again, kudos to him. You want to talk about toughness and never giving up. This could be a chance. This is this is something that goes unnoticed when we get to the end of the year and the championships decided by a handful of points. Nobody remembers this. They always remember the podium finishes. Nobody remembers when Dante, instead of settling for a tenth, worked his way up to eighth, and that made the difference. Because right now it's only a six-position lead for Cole Martinez. We'll see exactly how that closes up the gap in terms of the 41-point deficit that he came in chasing. Exactly. Nobody says nobody says what happens on the the bad days. No. Everybody no. just kind of there's so much that goes into winning a championship and there's little stuff like what happened today that could change all that. It could be a 5 cent part. It could be a master link. It could be something that is really really easily Oh, is oh, that no. JP Alvarez pushing oh, his bike? No. What in the world? You can't tell me it could be fuel. If it's if it's fuel at this point, like I said, I mean, every every mechanic down there in pit row must be on high alert. Let's double check. Let's triple check. I know he was in a battle with Colton for much of this race, but surely we could not be in a fuel situation again, could we? Yeah, I don't know. And that might not have been JP. That might have been somebody else. But it looked like it looked like that's who it was. Wow. Wow. Maybe perhaps some of the back of the pack or mid pack racers. Pushing it a little close on fuel. Shot out to Zach Bell, who's who's up, still up there in as far as lifetiming and scoring is still up there in third position. So this could be Zach Bell salvaging a podium and podium and getting going again. Great perseverance for him after getting the whole shot and leading this race, then fading. We told you he's still coming back from that ACL injury, but this ought to give him a giant shot of confidence if he can keep that Kawasaki on the box here today. And right now, he's in position. Top three, Justin Heft, Cole Martinez, Zach Bell, Austin Walton, not too far back though. Podium finisher from 29 Palms, trying to go back to back on the podium. There's Kai and Giacomo coming through to to get their last, uh, the, get that white flag, and uh, hopefully a little bit of reprieve. So we definitely gotta gotta put a shot out to the, the top three, and hopefully that wasn't JP pushing his bike in the Pro Two class. Um, it's because it looks like he is still out front when it comes to live timing and scoring. Well, I gotta say I've had a lot of fun calling this series with you. This is definitely the most unpredictable race that we have called so far. I mean, a lot of times somebody checks out, it is their day, but my goodness, I never thought that we were gonna see this with racers running out of fuel. Yeah, they, they thought we had it too easy. They didn't want to, now they wanted to make us work a little bit harder, but yeah, it's, and this, this kind of stuff, we like to say that it's this exciting all the time. It's not this unpredictable all the time. Like you said, a lot of guys come out, they, they get out there and then they kind of go through, through the the regular process of the race but this is definitely something that can happen and it shakes it up big time yeah, and these bikes are so good they're so bulletproof these mechanics are so doubt 
Typically, not to put the voodoo on anybody, but we don't really see many part failures like we used to back in the day. Uh, now, fuel is about the only thing that can get you. Exactly. When we were calling the the, the last race with the two-stroke nationals, we had bikes breaking left and right. And right. So this is predominantly four strokes, but it's definitely one of those things to where you're right. They, the manufacturers build these bikes so well that it doesn't normally happen that they break. So it, it's kind of... If you're if you're watching that stuff, it's not like they're just out for a Sunday cruise. Those guys are pushing these machines as far as they will go. Yeah, it's true, and, and especially with the rate in which the mechanics change parts and how great these aftermarket parts are. I always think back to that famous scene. Talking about the two-stroke nationals, we had Mike Brown there, the legend. Every time I, I see him, I think about when Grant Langston was out in front 20 plus years ago, getting ready to win a championship and all of a sudden a wheel fought, fails. Yeah. And that is all that it took. You hardly ever see that out here anymore. I feel like just parts, everything, the way that these bikes come from the factory has come so far from where we were 20 years ago. Exactly, and it looked like that, that we were seeing Justin Heff just right. Yep, that, that looks like Justin. He's weaving through the off-road section, uh, coming to, a, I believe, about the middle of the off-road section. That, that straightaway should come around and then makes a wide sweeping and then goes down, kind of headed back towards the casino itself. Um, that section is, is all, all, I know, a lot tougher than it looks. There's kind of a little tabletop there and then you drop into another thing and, and then you go down the ways and those guys are going fast right there. And then they kind of make a big loop around to the left and, and come back out and head towards that that pavement section that we we talked about earlier but like look at that like there's racing going on everywhere and then you got the casino in the backdrop like it looks like a fun time to me <laughs> yeah fun if you stay out of trouble i talked about the flash floods out there changing the landscape i can tell you too in a couple months we'll be qualifying for vegas Torino. guys like bryce menzies out there tearing it up with four-wheel drive trucks i'm sure they left a few holes out there that may be oh, unforeseen yeah. oh yeah there's there's holes everywhere out there and i mean this track is brutal I, that that actually doesn't look like fun to me right now like that 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 stuff is not fun you just want to get through it and he's coming towards the end of the off-road section so He's coming towards the end of his lap and getting closer to that checkered flag. So, you know, Cole Martinez out there looping around, you know, lurking a little bit. But it looks like Justin's kind of got this in hand. And uh, pretty soon he'll be back in that motocross section and hopefully crossing the, the finish line and, and celebrating with the Pervines Yamaha crew. I believe time has expired. So we are officially at a finish this time by which means still though Dante's got uh, about he's got about less than half a lap to try to make up some ground like we said he was running 10th at one point I think he was all the way back to 11th or 12th when he was fueling and he has really salvaged the day with an eighth again valuable championship points remember we pay back every single position and that could really be a factor with how hotly contested his title has been the last few years that's why he's the three-time champion he's shown why he's the three-time champion Back of the pack, Razor may have threw in the towel today. It's, that's it, I'm done, forget about it. I had to push my bike, I'm not winning this thing, I'm not going out there, it's 95 degrees here in Vegas, the course is rough. Dante just filled back up and went right back to work and picked up some valuable spots. We'll see where he actually finishes today. Well, and with everything going on, we got Justin Heff in first, and then another Pervine Yamaha with Trevor Stewart in sixth. And then we have Zach Bell in third on a Precision Concepts Kawasaki, and then his teammate, Tyler Lynn, in fifth. So look at the Kawasaki's. You got two Kawasaki's in the top five that you, you uh, those guys definitely pushing it and got to be a testament to that, that program that's going on. But it looks like Justin strolling through the motocross section takes a little bit of a look back just to make sure that there's nobody back there and that, that he's out front all by himself. And pretty soon he'll be taking that checkered flag. A few more turns to go for the Blue Crew, the Team Yamaha machine backed by Jet World and Fast House, Pervines, Justin Heff, 
looking to come home with the checkered flag. He is closing in on a finish here at round number six of the National Grand Prix Series from Prim, Nevada, getting through some lap traffic. That's the last thing you want to see right now is too, too many lappers in the way. Gets through cleanly. Trying uh -oh. To, uh oh, wait, what in the world? What in the world? What in the world is going on? Justin, have we, we captured it right on camera. As I told you, with a seven-mile course, we always wonder, is the camera going to be at the right place at the right time? He is pushing the bike, Mark Tilly. This is unbelievable. This is the most unpredictable NGPC race I have ever seen. Cole Martinez could be in line for the win. What happened to Justin? Turns away from a finish, and he is pushing the motorcycle. Is he out of gas? Did it break? This is unbelievable. Is he gonna push it to a finish? He's that close. Wow. Well, and the next person we'd be seeing, that's Cole that's Martinez. That's Cole Martinez, Cole so Martinez. Cole Martinez is gonna pass Justin Heff for the lead, and it looks like, it, I believe he was on that last section coming through. If he goes in and, and if it's gas, if he can splash gas, and get back out, get oh. back to the heartbreaker, heartbreaker for Pervine Jama. Ladies and gentlemen, unofficially, your winner today, Cole Martinez. Did we say never give up? If there has ever been a lesson about perseverance, if there has ever been a lesson about sticking to it on the last few turns, the Honda of Cole Martinez comes home with a win. Now let's follow this now, developing yeah, now story. Now we gotta see what happens with Justin Heff. So does he have to go back to where? I don't think so because basically what he did is he pushed it down. He was in that last section before he was. He didn't advance I, any position. I don't we'll think wait to so. get. I think he, I think. He didn't miss any we, of the track is what I should yeah, say. Yeah, I don't think he missed any of the track. I mean, maybe sections we'll that see. that would the ama would have to say we'll see what, what officials what do is. we'll wait to get a, we'll wait to get word i know his team uh waiting to get word as well because if they got to go back now is the time to do it better safe than sorry that's for sure but it, lo it looks like so tentatively we're getting a thumbs up from ngpc we're trying to like that was one of the other riders helping push him through but i'm not i'm not 100 percent sure well, oh my gosh, limping to a finish. Wow, cool. Oh, that was actually Cole Martinez going back because you can only be helped by a rider. That was Cole Martinez going back to the pits and helping that, helping push have to cross. I think that's what happened. <laughs> we are all at a loss that's here, guys. Amazing. You guys are watching this unfold as as we are. I wish we had definitive answers for you. We don't. You can see the officials down there. We're still trying to sort this thing out the best that we can. We be we believe Cole Martinez has won this race. We believe Justin Heff has finished in second. That is assuming there's no violations out there. There's no penalties. That I mean that that's amazing. That right there shows you the sportsmanship that is built in this series. You and have look a look at this, another bike. I think getting, that's JP's brother. Getting pushed to the finish. So that I think that's who we saw pushing a bike earlier. It wasn't wow. JP. So yeah, I mean, the, the sportsmanship is amazing. Like th that's awesome to see the winner go back and, and help, if, if that is what happened, help push the guy in second across. Like, wow. That, that is absolutely amazing. And my aficionado over here, Craig Hunter, is this the most, is this the most unpredictable NGPC race we have ever seen? It might be. It's, it seemed like we were at a foregone conclusion a couple times, and it is not the way the action well, that, unfolded today. That's Colton 8 coming across as we have live timing and scoring. JP was in front of him, but I don't see anybody in front of him. Um, so we'll have to see where the Pro 2 division, where they finish. But it shows that JP in live timing and scoring, but that was JP that looked like he came up afterwards. A thrilling, wild, unflinching, unabashed finish. For the action day, I can't wait to see the official order. I can't wait to see how the point series shakes out. And we still got to keep an eye to see where Dante Oliveira, your points leader, finishes. He was running eighth. 
We'll keep an eye on him. Yeah, there's definitely people that I don't want to be. I don't want to be a part of the 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 gas debacle, and Ooh. I don't want to be an official right now because I don't know how to figure all that out. And it looks like we might have the Cole Martinez, the winner, coming across right now. So we'll get to see his uh, get to see his reaction and, and kind of go from there. As they are still coming in here, round number six, what has been an incredibly, incredibly unpredictable round. Cole Martinez getting some hugs here in our, our TV area. My goodness, what, what an amazing, we're still sorting this thing out. It has yeah, been. There, there's, there's definitely lots of, uh, lots of sorting out that needs to happen with this to figure out. All right, so. As you can tell, guys, we're trying to figure this one out. We're going to step away for a second, but stay with us. We'll have more definitive answers and our podium finishers, we believe, when the Rad Custom Graphics Buffalo Bills Grand Prix returns right after this. Great new adventure here with Reason this year. I'm excited to uh, partner up with them. It's going to be an exciting new year. We have some great riders this year. Stop by. I'd love for you guys to check out the new Reason sunglasses. We're really looking forward to the adventure with them. Jerko off-road motorcycles are factory from the showroom floor. 
we offer a full lineup of two and four stroke motorcycles ready for your next adventure. Visit ShirkoUSA.com for more information. We welcome you back to round number six of the NGPC series. It is the Rad Custom Graphics Buffalo Bills Grand Prix, and I just consulted with my experts, my expert being Craig Hunter, who's been doing this for 30 years, and he says, yes, I am not a prisoner of the moment. This is the most unpredictable race that we have ever seen out here. Unbelievable, ladies and gentlemen. We had gas issues all day. We watched a lead change on the very last lap with just a few turns to go, but we'll give you the unofficial results right now. Coming home, number one on top of the box is Cole Martinez. We are joined by Mr. Cole Martinez up here, and I'll tell you, if there has ever been a lesson of never give up, never quit, Cole, it was just a few turns left to go. Justin broke, you took the lead. Take me through this thing from your perspective. Ah oh, man, I just kept digging. I did, I came around, uh, <clears throat> I came around uh, lap, I don't even know. I pitted early, I was a little tight and just eating dust the whole time. So I thought maybe if I pitted a little, er a lap or two early, I could, you know, put some good laps in, loosen up a little bit and, uh, you know, try and take this thing down to the wire. And it actually worked out. I had a pit a second time a couple laps ago, and then, you know, it's unfortunate for Justin. I've been there so many times, man. It's so frustrating. I've had so many instances on that last lap where something's gone. And, uh, you know, he rode a great race, but obviously I capitalized. And, uh, you know, it's nice to get the, I mean, really get the monkey off the back for the year. It's. Uh, it's been a tough year with injuries, illness, and the competition stiff. So uh, I look to keep digging and uh, you know try and keep taking these points down. That's the goal. That's right. Well, you came in 41 back, and you did a lot of damage today because we'll have to see where Dante ended up. We know he was running about seventh, so that's a lot of ground that you made up in the championship series. Let me ask you this: When you saw Justin pushing his bike, what was going through your mind? Make it to the finish. <laughs> Don't let anyone else get some points. Uh, yeah, I actually, I, I smashed it and got, got got across the finish, and I pinned it back to, because if I'm right, they at last year they said a racer can help a racer out there. So obviously I want the points, and, uh, you know, Justin's a little ways back in points, so I helped him cross the finish line, and, uh, you know, I didn't want anyone else to get any extra points on me. You know? Oh, there we, you go. We really need those points, and... Uh, you know the big pick for the big picture you know obviously race wins are nice but well we were complimenting your sportsmanship so it, it was sportsmanship and there was a little something in it for you as well so no yeah problem there. yeah I, I, you know all, every point counts so you got to make it happen well congratulations last thing before you go i don't know if you even know about this but mark tilly and i were wondering what is the story what was going on with gas today how did so many teams misjudge and how was your fuel situation um i think the lap times were just really long and uh kind of caught everyone off guard. The sand was deep, so that that as well. And then uh, for me, I pitted a couple laps early just because I was tight and eating dust the whole time. Like everyone was still on it. And I figure if I could pit, get back on it and go, uh, you know, I might have a clear track once I get through the while they pit. And it actually worked out great. And then I pitted with a couple laps to go and uh, got, I mean, I'm fortunate for Justin, you know, I've been there, like I said, I've been there hand so many times, man. It's so frustrating, but, uh, and then I, crossed and went back got him and you know i'm looking at the big picture and that's the point so let's make it happen well no doubt great day who you want to thank cole 
Oh my gosh. My family, uh, the whole Monster Energy Sketchers SLR Honda team, they've been amazing. Uh, Monster for everything they do. Oakley, uh, you know, Alpine Star, Twisted Development, and, uh, you know, all the glory to God. Big congratulations, guys. Let him hear it. He is your winner. He did not give up. Cole Martinez coming home on top of the box today. Big congratulations. Getting a hug from our 250 winner. Oh, we got jo Justin in. Thank goodness, Justin stepping in. Justin, I didn't know if we were going to be able to see you. We were, we're like, where's Justin? Somebody said he had, he had collapsed. He was so tired. It was crazy. What a crazy race. Oh, I just heard from Craig Hunter. He, he said it best. In 30 years of doing this, this is the most unpredictable race he has ever seen. Tell me about that last sequence of events from your perspective. Yeah, dude, I'm, I don't even know what to say about it. I, uh, I rode a good race. You know, I got past in second place, and I don't know what happened to Dante. I, was, I, I thought I could see him, and the next thing you know, he was gone, and I, I don't know if he had a bike problem or if he went down, but I, uh, I got into the lead after that, and, dude, I was riding my own race. I was, I was pushing, and I was riding really good. I was riding smooth, and, man, dude, I'm, I'm just, like, I'm speechless. I can't believe this. I've came so close to winning these races before, and this was... I was maybe 30 seconds from the checkered flag, and um, my bike broke. So I'm up super upset, but I'm super happy that I was still able to come in and um, get second place. That's amazing. It's the best finish of the season for me. And um, a big thank you to Cole. You know, he took the checkered flag, and um, he had my back out there, and there's, there's no one else I'd want to see the win than him. And, I mean, I'm, I'm bummed, that I'm also happy. Last year I ended up going to the hospital after this race. I, I had a fractured back here, and... Man, dude, I, I came through, but I'm very upset. Well, hey, I'm glad you're okay, and salvaging a second is a, a <laughs> huge deal. And if you, if you look at this thing as an optimist, too, you, you could have ran out of fuel deep away from the finish line. You didn't, and you showed a lot of toughness by pushing your bike, so that is definitely a gold medal around your neck. Big congratulations. Who do you want to thank for your effort here today? Yeah, you know, um, I can't thank the whole Purvine Racing, Yamaha, Fast House, um, my mom, my dad, you know, I got a new job last, last month, and I'm super happy right now, but I can't thank everyone enough. Thank you. Well, hey, my brother, you push through, guys. Let them hear it. Get some hydration. Go rest. You earned it. Coming home with a second, a hard-fought, emotional win for Justin Heaven. What was the most unpredictable round of NGPC ever? Our, oh, and here comes our winner in the 250 category stepping in. It was a seesaw battle all day long between Mr. Colton Eck and J.P. Alvarez. We had a great time watching it. You'll get a look at unofficial results right now on your screen. Colton Eck, our, our unofficial winner, went back and forth with J.P. Alvarez. You can see a fast lap time by JT up, J.P. up there. Uh, Colton, I got to ask you right away. I mean, we're talking about the energy expenditure and how tough it was out there. I don't know if it was tougher for anybody than you, than you and, and Alvarez because you guys were back and forth battling this entire 90 minutes. What was that like? <clears throat> yeah, man, it was really tough. Uh, you know, back in SoCal all winter, it's been way colder than normal. So uh, coming out here, I think, I don't know, it was 95 or something today. It was absolutely brutal. Uh, and Jake didn't let up for, man, over an hour. Uh, I had to fight every single minute. <laughs> so... Well, it was it was gnarly. I I earned it for sure. Jake made me earn it. We couldn't see everything, and you probably don't know offhand. But if you had to get how many lead changes were we talking about between you guys? It seemed like you guys were just back and forth. Uh, just one, I think. Just I, one. Uh, okay. Yeah, I made but the you... pass first lap, and then he got me back maybe uh, a lap or two before the pit, and I just sent it a little bit harder in the dust and and made it back by him and uh, kept him behind me the rest of the race. Tons of fuel issues in the 450 category. Didn't seem like that was the case in the 250 category. Did your team experience any of this hardship? Uh, no, not that I know of. Um, I don't know how much gas I have left, but I'm sure it was close. Uh, <laughs> this track was super fast. We were on the gas really hard. and uh, Yeah, so I'm not surprised that uh, some guys ran out of gas. Well, big congratulations on your victory. Who would you like to thank? Uh, man, I'd, just, I'd really like to thank uh, Jacob from Factory Connection, uh, Chris Kiefer, Timmy at uh, KTM. Uh, I struggled with my bike a lot uh, the first half of the year, and those guys have been putting in the overtime uh, trying to get me comfortable, and finally figured it out. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm super stoked. Thank you to the whole Three Brothers Hatch Racing KTM team, uh, Hoosier Tire, like I said, Factory Connection, uh, O'Neill X-Brand, uh, Blood Lubricants. Um, 
IMS, Rad Manufacturing, uh, just everybody helps me out. It's awesome. Thank you. I think the cowboy hat and the mustache helped them today in the desert, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hear it for your winner in the 250 category. Congratulations. A hard fought win. And here comes JP Alvarez, who he was battling with all day long. Mark and I were trying to uh, keep up to date. I mean, you guys, you guys were so close. We weren't sure about how many times the lead had changed. Uh, Colton just updated this. That was actually only one time. But, boy, you, you guys were just right there. There was no separation all day long. What was that battle like for 90 minutes? Uh, you know, it, it was fun. Um, I, I was just trying to keep it clean with him. Um, there was a couple of times I came in on the inside of him, and I was just like, oh, I, 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 this is a fun race. Like, this is – it was definitely fun. Uh, you know, I'm kind of lost with words with it. You know, I'm, I'm just stoked to be on the podium again and just keeping it consistent and going. I know you put in a lot of time in the off season on conditioning and your fitness level's very high. How difficult was it out there today in this heat? Uh, it, it was pretty brutal. You know, the last two laps definitely got to me. Um, you know, I was just like trying to hang on, but you know, the, the beginning of the race, I was just like, you know what, I, I can't let him get away from me. So I was just staying right there. At the same time, yeah, yep, same, we were keeping a close watch on that because 450 class. I don't know if you're abreast of this yet. They were having all kind of problems with fuel. Seems like you guys weren't. Oh wow, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know about that one, but yeah, I guess, uh, I guess a little too, I guess the 250 is a little bit more fuel manageable, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's what we were figuring. Well, big congratulations. Who would you like to thank for your podium finish today? Yeah, um, you know, I got, I got to thank my dad, uh, my trainer Robert, Enzo Racing, KTM, RPM, FMF. You know, everyone else that helps me out, you know, they're, they all play a huge role in my, my program. Big congratulations. Thanks for the entertaining battle. Second place in the 250 category, J.P. Alvarez. And there was a lot of calamity. There was a lot of unpredictability and what was one of the most unexpected races ever. I'll tell you what wasn't unexpected, and that is what the 15-year-old young lady sitting next. 17. Who told us 15? You're, oh, you make, well, hey, a lot of ladies, when they get old, they appreciate being younger than what they are. 17 years old, I can tell you the fact that I do know for sure you led this thing wire to wire and were absolutely flying. How were you so dominant today? Uh, I just uh, made sure to sprint a few laps, uh, the first few laps, and uh, I just tried riding my own lines, fighting, uh, riding the edges, try to find smooth lines, and uh, I eventually pulled away. I kept gapping her every lap, and so uh, I was happy with what I was doing, the heat didn't hit me too hard and uh, I felt good out on the track. It, it seemed like the track was getting rougher every single lap. Were you really noticing a difference when we got into the final 30 minutes of this race? Yeah, I could tell it, it actually kind of got more softer in some of the sections, but uh, again, you just kind of try to ride the edges or something like that, like to keep uh, your, yourself fresh. Well, you did a great job. Power to the young ladies. You were so far ahead. What do you think it is that is vaulting you so far ahead of the competition? Is it the training? Is it the bike? Is it everything coming together? Um, so I, I still go to public school, and so I'm a senior, and I don't really get too much riding time. So definitely my off-the-bike training. I work hard off the bike um, when I can't ride, and so I think that helps my endurance in these races. That is impressive. Are you going to graduate this year? Uh, yeah, so I graduated in like four weeks. I just had my senior prom yesterday. Senior prom yesterday wins today. <laughs> Big congratulations. That's the way to do it. Uh, what's your prom date think of what you do out here? Uh, I just went with all my, my girlfriends. Oh, you are. there you go. That's the way to go. Independent <laughs> woman. I like it. Who do you want to thank? Uh, I'd like to thank my mom, my dad. Uh, they do so much for me. My whole family, KTM, Alpine Stars, uh, WP Suspension, Scott Goggles, Mika Metals, DT, um, Twist Development, Twin Air, and uh, everyone else behind me. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're a champion today in the women's category. Michaela Nielsen, great job. Michaela, she went to prom, picks up a win. That is a good week, I would say. Getting ready to graduate in four weeks. We wish you all the best. And ladies and gentlemen, we're really happy to bring in uh, Mr. Zach Bell, who had a great outing today, led this race. We were watching you the whole time. You pulled just a beautiful whole shot. We're starting to pull away. The questions were, we wondered, would the injury creep back in? Was that an issue for you today? Um, yes and no. I mean, this track was super brutal. Um, my goal was to... Uh, just to get out front, you know, I, I haven't led any laps and I wanted to get out front and uh, lead some laps, so that was the goal today. Um, I hit a wall just like about four laps in, was super random. Um, thankfully my pit was coming up and uh, once we pitted I started feeling a little bit better. 
Um, and then fortunately, you know, I ended, I ended up third. You know, some guys had some unfortunate issues, but I felt my, put myself in a good position all day, and um, I rode my butt off. You know, this track was tough, and these podiums don't come easy, especially being off after two years. Well, you know, we're hearing this is the most unpredictable race in 30 years of doing this, and I, the theme today is perseverance, never give up. You exemplify that because you didn't. We saw you start to fade, and we are like, uh-oh, is that injury creeping in? But you just stayed at it, and then the script got flipped with all these fuel issues. Everybody dropped out, and you still salvage a podium. What was the reaction from your team when you were able to come home in third? I mean, they're super stoked. You know, like I said, these podiums don't come easy. I've been out of it for two years, so... Uh, you know, I always put myself in a good position. Um, I was almost going to quit on myself, but I knew that how much work I put in, and I just keep going, and that put me in third, so I was happy I finished. Last question for you, and I don't know if you're going to be able to answer this. It, do you have any explanation for maybe why Team Kawasaki didn't have any fuel issues today? Because we saw fuel issues with a lot of riders in the 450 class. Well, we've been doing this for a long time. You know, Persistent Concepts has been doing this for, for 20 years, so they have a lot of experience in doing this, and... Uh, I have full trust in that, so we were, uh, we were rolling and we had a good setup today. Well, big congratulations. Who do you want to thank? I'd like to thank my mom and dad, my wife for being here, my whole family, uh, Precision Concepts, Chaparral uh, Motorsports, Kawasaki, Liat, uh, and just everybody. You know, I, I really appreciate it. Zach Bell coming home with a third. Big congratulations. Guys, that's why you never give up. You never quit. A great job, a great effort by him as Team Kawasaki salvages a third. What a crazy, unpredictable race. Here comes Jack Simpson. Jack, you, Jack, you got to fill me in, Mr. Australia. Is I imagine you have finished on the box, right? We're still trying to piece this thing together because it was such a crazy, unpredictable finish. Third place today? Yes, sir. All right, take me through it from your perspective. Um, it was tough. It was really hot for me. Um, it's probably the hottest race I've ever done in my life. That says a lot because yeah. I know you've run some hot ones over in Australia. Huh? A little bit, but... Um, we train in the heat, but we've never, we're never really racing it. So, um, yeah, that was different. But, yeah, from Blythe, uh, which was the last round we had in another series, um, it really chewed me up a little bit. So, you know, I just got used to the heat, trained in the heat, and um, I honestly feel so much better um, today. Um, I got tired, but I wasn't, like, in survival mode. I was still going hard. What was the toughest part of the course for you? Probably the dust. Um, the, yeah, the dust. Not... I'm used to riding in the dust, funny enough. Um, the bike was handling really good, so it was mainly just once I got a bit of breathing room, um, I, I closed in on the other guys, but like they were ripping just nearly the same sort of lap times as myself. So I didn't want to make any stupid mistakes with the big holes and you know the dust. There's a lot of there's a lot of risk out there, but yeah, everything went well. That's exactly what Mark and I were talking about, wondering how you guys were contending with the dust, especially the riders trying to move up and advance position. I mean, wh what goes through your mind when vision goes away and you're trying to race for position like that? What do you um, do? You just, you can't push it too hard because I've, I've actually had crashes in the dust, so you've got to respect it. Um, it's like having an A4 white piece of paper in front of you. You can't see nothing and no one's going to be able to pass you or whatever from behind, so... Um, yeah, just, just smart decisions and just try and pick those gaps of dust and really use it up. Sometimes you can use it your advantage too and move over on someone and dust them out. So, Well, great job today. Who would you like to thank? I'd like to thank the whole Burbines Racing um, team, all the sponsors associated with that, the Twisted Development. Um, 250 motor was um, ripping today, 100% goggles, O'Neill, um, Seeds, my mechanic, or my helper on the day, and his, um, and his better half, Dana. They, um, they're, they're very, like, they're, they're my um, backbone for this whole thing because I'm over on my own in a way. We've got the team, but they're my right hand guys. Hey, so. man, and shout out to dad watching in Australia. What time is it in Australia oh, right I now? I don't know. I, He's I don't up know. early, isn't he? He would be. He He's would up be. early enjoying the live stream. Well, thanks so much and big congratulations. Australia's Jack Simpson coming home on top of the box here for Pervines Yamaha. Unpredictable, absolute crazy day. Like I said, guys, 30 years of running this series, this is the most unexpected finish we have ever had here. We're going to have to play it back. And Mrs. Jacobs steps in.
Miss Jacobs steps in. Well, big congratulations to you. You were able to persevere. That was the theme today, persevere, because we saw so many lead changes. It was crazy. Uh, clearly, Michaela flying today, but you weren't too far behind, and you certainly never gave up. Tell me about what this race was like from your perspective. Yeah, this was probably the most brutal race I've ever done with the heat and then how dry and dusty it was. It was so hard to see out there, and that first lap was so important, but then once those a open guys caught us it was so hard to stay with Ava and try and follow her lines and I could see her in some spots and I could see where I was catching her other laps but with that heat it really just wore me out. I can understand that no one expected it to be this hot certainly not me I'm sitting here wearing jeans I overdressed I you're all geared up I can't imagine what it was like out there yeah. Jack Simpson told us moments ago when vision goes away he said you just really have to respect that because you can get in trouble and you can get in crash let me ask you what is your strategy out there when you, when you just couldn't see? What do you do? Do you try to dial it back momentarily till it clears up? Do you pull a tear off? What do you do? Yeah, uh, I'd have to agree with Jack on that one. I definitely scaled it back on a couple of those straightaways. I just didn't feel comfortable, and when you're not feeling comfortable, it's uh, definitely worse to try and push yourself because you'll definitely lead it into a mistake, and it could be something bigger than it should be. So I love it. I believe last time you told me you are working with a sports psychologist. Yeah. What did your sports psychologist say about entering this brutal, hot, grueling race? <laughs> she told me, Caitlin, just make it to the checkers and be proud of yourself. And uh, I'm definitely proud of myself and uh, everything I've overcome. So. That you did. Who would you like to thank? I'd like to thank the whole RPM, KTM, FMF racing team, uh, Moose, CD, Alpine Stars, um, my dad, and everybody else. Thank you so much. Big congratulations. Great job, guys. Third place today in the women's division. Everybody earning it out in this desert. Vegas heat. My goodness, it was brutal out there today. That track is brutal. Somebody needs to, We need to send Mark Tilly out on the pit bike to do a lap. I think he needs to do a mandatory lap just to see how rough conditions are. Uh, one young lady that we have not heard from yet, second place in the women's category, Ava Silvestri doing a great job out there. Ava, Michaela was clearly on today, but there was no quit in you whatsoever. We heard vision was terrible. What was the roughest part of the day for you? Um, honestly, on the third and fourth lap, I got super sick and honestly thought I was about, like, about to get uh, heat stroke, so oh. I really wasn't really stoked on that, but um, got my, you know, stuff together you could say and uh, tried to put a push but obviously you know she was too far in front of me to do anything and I had a decent enough gap on third that it wasn't really going to affect me much. How old are you Ava? Uh, 19. 19 okay so we're out you're graduated already? Yes. Excellent. College? Uh, I'm Right now I'm taking a year off and then I'm going to go back next year and try to get my marketing degree. Smart you're in the college of motocross that's the best <laughs> college to be in college of Grand Prix series out here. Let me ask you this 19 years old very tough female you're out there you're getting sick what keeps you going what keeps you pushing uh you know i just for me i just hate quitting races it's I, that's really you know i had i've only quit only i think three races and it's due to injury so I, if i'm not injured you know don't come back to the pit or else you know you're not gonna get a ride home <laughs> <laughs> that's one way to look at it well great job today uh what's what's gonna have to be done in between the next race to try to catch Michaela. What are you going to work on? Um, unfortunately, it's the same thing every time. Just got to work on those sprints. Uh, sprint speed is definitely what's holding me back. Of course, obviously, I got sick today, so that was my personal problem. But, you know, definitely working on sprint speed and just, you know, being able to hold a consistent pace the whole time. Great job today. Keep up the good work. Who would you like to thank? Uh, of course, my mom and dad, my whole family, the whole Three Rows Hatch, Gas Gas team, Trolley Designs, FMF, IMS. Uh, factory canopies, the Alpine Stars, and just all the team sponsors. Thank you. Go get yourself a cold Gatorade, put your feet up, and I hope your stomach feels better because you earned it today. Second place in the women's division, overcame an illness. I think a lot of riders out there were probably feeling the illness as we hit 95 degrees on the thermometer. What a wild one it was as we bring Mark Tilly back in. Well, Mark, we, we've got some answers, but I got a funny feeling you with Dirt Bike Magazine, you're going to be busy with, uh, busy with the keyboard because there are many stories to be written here there we we are just scratching the surface what happened with the fuel issues the shake up at the end craig hunter telling us the most unpredictable race in 30 years of doing this your thoughts sir i it's pretty amazing because craig hunter's old he's been around for a long time so uh <laughs> your pay's getting yeah. <laughs> so yeah no i mean it's pretty amazing i'm gonna if i'm writing the story for this i'm gonna have to go back and watch it like i mean i, I got to watch it and i can't even tell you what happened i mean it's amazing to where this that gas has come down to 
make make this such a big deal and, and, and it changed everything. And I mean, you saw you're gutted for Justin, who basically pushed his bike and just got gas and then came up. So it's it's definitely one of those things to where it's a great and exciting for the fans. You're you're heartbroken for the for the riders because you know the riders, but you know it's it's never give up, never die. I mean, you have Cole who, until the last, you know, 200 feet or 100 yards or whatever, he didn't lead the race, and it, you go it goes back to, yeah, it's not over till you get to the checkered flag. And I have said that so many times, and I hope on future broadcasts, you great fans out there, remember that it's not just announcer speak, it's not just cliches. We're not just trying to keep you watching when somebody checks out and saying, hey, it's not over. This race proved more than any other race that we have seen. It's not over till it's over. Exactly, and I've I've done this now a, a few times, and it's one of those things to where we always say, "Hey, it's it's not over till it's over. It's not a something could happen, all that." And then we say, "Oh, it's pretty much in the bag." I mean, I I could go back and look at that tape and say, "Ah, he's kind of cruising to the checkered flag," like, and then all of a sudden something happens, and you know, like I said, you're you're gutted for that, but hey, that's racing.